Hello, hello, hello. We are back with the 10th VRD. We, uh, are we, we, we live ten, audio on us? 10 Great. St. Lotus VRDs already. Wow. Yes, this is, I mean, time flies. 10 of them in, I believe, five years now. Uh, almost six years. So these are supposed to be quarterly events. Uh, Working through pa- the pandemic. Though, yeah, though. pandemic did definitely throw a wrench in it. Mm-hmm. Um, our gracious host, uh, Mark, breaking all of his shoulders and clavicles, oh, yeah. uh, throws a wrench for, in things. Oh, yeah, give it up for Mark for hosting yeah. after being in a near-death bicycle accident. My God. Uh, I, would, I would clap for him if these mics weren't so sensitive. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, we are back for number 10, and this one is a little bit different. It, it's a little special. It, it, is, it is a little special in that it is a city championship between Hell Chicago yeah. and St. Louis. Oh, yeah! No. Woo, all right! Oh, St. Louis sucks. Uh, and... <laughs> so, hold on just a second. Um, we, so we have an AI who... Well, this, it's incredible. Uh, our AI Derek uh, has is going to be doing uh, as this. And excuse me, Derek. Uh, we are looking at the stream incoming uh, scene here. Is this what is currently live? No, it's it's no, it's not. <laughs> Thank wow, you, Derek. That, that AI Great. voice modulator sounds so good. <laughs> Derek does see this strange turn. Yeah. So, yeah, just, um, you know, hands together for our AI, Derek, um, who will be helping us out with the technical aspects of the stream today. But mm-hmm. before we get into the rest of it... This is this is super exciting. Yeah. So, uh, me and Brandon have been clashing on these uh, VRDs for a couple of years now. Yeah, We've since VRD like four 6. Or five of them and a bunch online. And we thought it would be fun to get some of our homies, some of the St. Lotus regulars, and some of my friends up from Chicago... Get them together, do a little, you know, strategizing, coaching kind of thing. And like the old school pro tours uh, that would have these, like, uh, you know, teams like Channel yeah. Fireball or uh, Star City Games, get a couple of teams together, come down, have them clash, and see who comes out on top. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, excited about. it's really exciting. And, like, you know, just the fact that this event is based in St. Louis, obviously, St. Louis is going to have a very strong contingent. But uh, Chicago, you know, having 20 times as many people within the city <laughs> limits, uh, approximately. It really gives us a good uh, pull give, to draw from. Yes, gives yeah. them a, a good pull. And the fact that, you know, it's a mere four and a half hours away, which by Midwestern standards is, is absolutely nothing. So we've got four, four drafters here mm-hmm. from each of those respective cities. The winning drafter represents their city, and that mm-hmm. city becomes the reigning champion. The first Midwestern Showdown Classic, baby! And, Which uh, is, was just named on the spot. So put that on a trophy. Genius. It's genius. Also, and Mark has made this apparent, the winner of today is going to host the same event next year. So uh, next year we're going to run it back. We're going to have some St. Louis, uh, some St. Louis people and some Chicago people run oh, so back be the same the event. And we'll, yeah, and we'll come back and we'll clash again. And after Chicago wins this time, we're going to host all you guys up there. Uh, our boy Chad, who's in the draft, uh, just bought a big new house. He's uh, getting his streaming set up and stuff. He's really jazzed to host an event and uh, invite some of you guys up there. That, so, I mean, <laughs> if you win, maybe we'll just invite Mark. But yeah. if you obviously get crushed. As somebody who has hosted a lot of events <laughs> in their lifetime, that W turns into a curse, baby. <laughs> but uh, aside from all that, let's introduce ourselves I am uh, Brandon, of course, former only one-time champ. But next to me, representing Chicago, the coach. Mason Lang, the three-time. The, the three-time. And therefore winningest St. Lotus player in history. I don't like to brag, but it's There is nothing Mason loves say. more than bragging. <laughs> and, and, and we love him for it. And, and I have used all of my genius big brain strategies to try to instill in my teammates today, <laughs> <laughs> despite their kicking and screaming and refusal to listen to me. <laughs> now, on the St. Louis side of things, I'm ju- I just let them do their thing because I am not that confident and my strategies are very all over the wall. Uh, so the guys that we're going to introduce you to now, if uh, Derek could take us in to the draft screen, uh, the St. Louis crew. We'll we'll, we'll start yes. on start on the right and kind of work our way in. 
Uh, we've got uh, Dan, who you may remember from uh, the last two VRDs, uh, nine, uh, nine and eight, where he played mm-hmm. weird wheel effect underworld breach thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the previous one uh, where he played Infect. And we're getting started with Chad here, uh, taking yeah. us the comfortable pick, number yeah, one, yeah. Ancestor Recall. Recall over Black Lotus, kind of interesting, but uh, the Chicago crew... I do have a lucky. prediction right now. I know yeah. what, now, this is going to be a Mox Jet. A Mox Jet? A Mox Jet. Sam's decided to go the way of the dark side. Yes. And pick some, some black cards, huh? Okay. Yes. I like that. Um uh, we got uh, Dan, Stephen, um, uh, a longtime uh, participant. Jeff also had uh, played in eight and nine. Sam mm-hmm. uh, is my little nepo baby. <laughs> uh, well, Sam's got such an interesting story with this format, right? Because yes. Sam has basically only played Magic in the context of Vintage or History Draft, right? That is correct. That's uh, a wild way to start playing Magic. <laughs> my God. It, it, you know, I am biased because I live with her. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And I am very familiar, uh, you know, with her her magic history. But every time it's kind of put into those words, it's it's absolutely insane. Like if you went up to somebody and were like, uh, "Yeah, you want to learn how to play magic? Okay, cool. Let's take you into the most nebulous, complex, mental masturbatory, like needlessly. This oh, is going so shit. fast. It I'm going to get off of this for a second. So we got. Okay. Let's talk about it a little bit. So um, the Saint, uh, the Chicago guys got uh, the privilege of getting the first three C picks. So they picked one, two, and eight. Yeah. Um, and then Noah looks like he drew the short straw and got the last pick and got stuck in C six, which is fine. Um, Sam hit him with the first pick mock shot. I mean, it's all fairly standard, right? All the yeah. power and all the moxes go first. And it looks I like will it... say, I know Jeff loves mox oh, so far, but I think, it's the so worst. I think it's the worst mox. This is the wheelhouse that Swifty loves to be in. Where he's got the pearl and the emerald. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, and so Dan going time walk into soul ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, this mm-hmm. is you know what? If you're gonna generate advantage early in the game, time walk soul ring is a great way to do it. Absolutely. Now, so Noah is getting stuck. He's gonna be the first person <laughs> to not get. There we go. Right oh in, man, in. Steven. Steven is not gonna be pleased with that. He had mentioned to me earlier that his initial plan was to go Mox into Ragavan. Uh-huh. Uh, and if he can't do that, then we'll probably see right now an Oko from him. Oko? Yeah. Interesting. Oko yeah. is Broko. Oko, and, Oko is uh, Broko, and the, it is no Joko. On the short list of the best colored spells in Magic, yeah. Oko certainly, uh, certainly gets up there as far as first pickable. Ragavan, too. Um, there's obviously so many great artifacts and so many great blue cards that sort of get snapped up in the first yeah. couple rounds. If you kind of discount the power nine, which we see all of other than Time Twister off the board here, mm-hmm. uh, and Ancestral, oh, Ancestral Recall's part of that, uh, and, you know, and Sol Ring, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, that's when the draft really starts, is yeah. when we start to see Ragavan yeah. go, and then Oko. Any time we escape the first uh, ten picks or so, yeah. and all five mocks have gotten taken, yeah. Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, and there's no, like, crazy, someone's and, picking Fast Bond or and, Wheel of Fortune or something wild. And I'm we, see, like, a, hey, we see a off. we see a tinker from Steven. Good job. Ooh. Okay. And Jeff, going back to the see, old tried and true well. Man, okay, are you, here? here's a question for you, yeah. Brandon. When I saw the lineup of the four players here, Sam, Jeff, Steven, and Dan repping uh, the St. Louis crew, yeah. my first thought was, Boy, Jeff and Dan like to play a lot of the same decks. They, Very you know what? similar strategies. Uh, they do. And I think um, that when these are so spread out, and like if there are cards that are on the board that have done really well for you in the past, and both mm-hmm. of these, Jeff and Dan, like regularly go five and two or yeah. four and three. They're, they they're always, it, it always comes down to that last match for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so for them to get into this position and be like, hey, the card that won me all those games last time is still on the board. Mm-hmm. They just kind of go back to it. And that's, that. and I think the, you know, for guys like us, the impulse is less, is, is there less as much because we have all these Discord drafts to get a chance to try out all these other cards. Oh, so absolutely. going back through uh, 
uh, on, the, on our first wheel, we've got Chad, who's got an Ancestral Recall, a Snapcaster Mage, and Force of Negation. Mm -hmm. Turns out Ancestral Recall and Force of Negation, both great targets for uh, Snapcaster Mage, as you oh, yeah. remember from last time. Absolutely. And Chad looks like he's just got a nice, strong blue start. Yep. Dylan also cementing himself just in a nice, strong blue strategy. And looking at Sam, a Mox Jet into a Vampiric Tutor and then a Thoughtseize. Uh well, when, I mean, she know, uh, anyone here should know my thoughts that I would have taken that thought seize before the Vampiric Tutor, but, mm -hmm. you know, that's fine. Yeah, we were actually struggling with some of our pre-tournament prep. Uh, I was really talking a lot of smack about Vampiric Tutor to the rest of the crew. Um, since in, you're inherently getting uh, a little bit of card disadvantage when you play it uh, yep. in the first place, I'm a bigger fan of Demonic Tutor, just sort of adding that one black kicker to whatever the best card in your deck is. Yeah. So but if you're trying to draft a combo deck, Vampire Tutor is very nice. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Sam, going those three picks, uh, and because, you know, there's some nepotism there, it is something that we discussed about Vampire Tutor versus Demonic Tutor, mm -hmm. and when is it worth that trade-off, the, having the one mana for the instant speed versus uh, the two mana for bringing it into your hand. And like Mason said, it's, the consideration is, are you playing, like, a combo? Like, is every mana matter? Wow. Ooh, okay. okay, so... Some interesting yeah. ones So, up. Jeff going uh, into uh, Sapphire, into Time Vault, Mana Vault. Uh, both of those things, Sapphire. great to untap. Mm -hmm. um, I personally, I feel like Mana Vault, uh, you can hang that pick a little bit mm -hmm. longer and that there's more impact that you can get. Then we've got Steven going uh, Tinker into Oko. Yeah, which is a little tough because Steven's kind of putting himself right into the middle of that blue card race with at least Chad and Dylan, who you know are already taking blue cards, and Jeff, I would assume you're gonna you're gonna assume that he's going to pick some of those blue cards because A, he always does. Yeah. Um that guy that guy is constantly running. <laughs> oh, All right, so now uh, real quick, Derek, if we could scroll up to round two. Um, I, and so, yeah, we've got, uh, Noah going mana crypt into Ragavan, Karn, and then Minsk and Boo. Yeah. So what he we're, was really anxious about this one. Yeah. He didn't what, know if anyone else was going to have Minsk and Boo on his radar. So he wanted to, it, it's his, it's his favorite card. He wanted to play yeah. it 100% this draft. So, and sometimes you, that's just what you have to do, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is <laughs> you, you just have to take the card and stake your claim. Mm -hmm. I have been one of those people who's gotten really burned by being like, here's like the staple card of my deck. And I think I can float it longer and longer and like get more value. And then at some point, like Someone the percentage, the up. percentages yeah. just keep creeping up that somebody else is going to take it. Especially so, once you make it yeah. obvious that you want to get it. Yeah. Because then people are going like, yeah, to start side eyeing you. Dan is doing uh, uh, a Dan. thing, a thing similar to last time. Uh, mm -hmm. We're at least in the sense that, uh, you know, he's got uh, a twister effect. He's got fast bond, which uh, is my personal favorite power card. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and Dan, Dan uh, really likes the wheel deck. Yeah. Um, and fast bond wheels is like a classic cube archetype where you're just yeah. wheeling through your deck. You're playing every land and then you're playing another draw spell. You're playing all, all your lands playing yeah. over and over and over again. Really powerful combination. There's obviously a lot of directions you can go with that. And it is in those colors that Dan loves to play, blue-green, which leaves him open to uh, kind of pivot into Infect. Mm -hmm. So Swifty going with Urza Saga into Teferi. Uh, double Mox. So Urza Saga is so appropriately valued, not only at that end of the third round, mm -hmm. but yep. for the deck that Swifty's already put together in the first two picks. Let's yeah, him no, get... no, 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 it's looking, it's looking really nice with the double moxes. Yeah. Um, Teferi, you can rebounce your Urza Saga and get more value out of it after you uh, hit the, the second turn, at least once. Uh, I, nice believe, I believe uh, Teferi fair. only lets you bounce uh, creatures' oh. enchantments. Um, yeah, uh, Urza Saga's enchantment. But maybe you, you know what? Yep. So this is this is Pap why there's Ooh. two of us in the booth. Pap wow. Just made a mistake here. Okay. So here's the thing, and and I was gonna mention this uh, as we got to it, but I think that any of the blue players, uh, especially Dylan and Chad, should 100% be picking Hole Breacher right here. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Well, right and here. so like the the big mistake, uh, if Chad or Dylan. Uh, Maybe even Steven, because, you know, he's got the Tinker, and he mm -hmm. can go yeah. into a, uh, 
Uh, there we go. Okay. Oh my yeah, god, they heard me. Holy <laughs> shit. I, well, you know, Hole Breacher, so this, th- that is round five that Hole Breacher gets taken, and so mm-hmm. it's gone as early as Second may- third, I maybe, think. I know for sure it's gone in the third round. I've taken mm-hmm. it in the third round. Uh, but uh, I don't know if it's gone in the second yeah. before. Well, since Chad's on the wheel, um, it really is a little bit interchangeable yeah. between that third and fourth pick. So it's actually like probably one round yeah. later. I could see it going before cards like Dark Confidant and Tolarian Academy and Flood Strand and, and yeah. cards like that. And so and Sam uh, going Dark Confidant Black with pick you, four into is she, Skull Clamp. Is she planning on doing Black White? No. She's oh, not. Oh, interesting. Uh, so interesting. I've got okay. the full intel on Sam, right, right. And, it, and it'll be revealed okay. over the course yeah, of this. I like that. Nice. Um, I am very excited about the deck that she decided to put together. It's, mm-hmm. you know, we were kind of fighting about <laughs> who got to play uh, a certain archetype uh, in a oh, next premiere? upcoming VRD. Yeah, right, like uh, and then when the opportunity came for me to assemble the St. Louis team, uh I was like, you know what? This is a great opportunity for you to come in and, and play this deck and, you know, be a part of t- Team St. Louis. Um, because, like, you know, classically speaking, she doesn't have the 20 years of experience that everybody mm-hmm. else does, but it is nothing short of remarkable uh, what she's been able to do as somebody who has only played Magic for less than a year and a half mm-hmm. and this being her only exposure ever to the format. Mm-hmm. So Well, and you know... Um, Deck construction and then actual play experience or play skill. Yeah. Like once you actually get onto the onto the rubber. Yeah. Um, comes up so often. It you does. Know, you you have guys who will put together seemingly good looking VRD decks, but will have trouble converting those into wins sometimes. Especially uh, when we talk about it on the the Discord, um, guys will say like, "Yeah, I think my deck's really good, but like I'm just not very good at playing it." You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, Sam, I think actually in the last uh, draft put together a deck that looked really strong yeah and then i think she had a little bit of trouble navigating because again that lack of experience actually playing it yeah it it does um and uh part of that part of that issue comes down to like not knowing what the opponents are doing and not knowing how to play around that and so you know when we were kind of in some preliminary discussions uh and she was throwing ideas out about her archetypes you know i kind of said like hey with your third round pick, if you're planning on taking Thoughtseize, mm-hmm. just take the card that you don't know what it does and you don't have to worry about it. That was my strategy for two or That's three funny. years in Magic. So uh, as we continue throughout the draft, uh, yeah. Chad Chad getting some mm-hmm. uh, value creatures to go along with his Ancestral and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, Snapcaster mm-hmm. and Force of Negation. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, Brazen Borrower and Hole Breacher are... I mean, Hole Breacher Premier. certainly... Beautiful. Is Hol- Hole Breacher, I, I believe, is probably the second best blue creature in the format. Mm-hmm. Him being on the wheel, it doesn't matter what order he takes a right. Hole Breacher, uh, Brazen Borrowing. In. But I mm-hmm. think that, in particular, you showed last time how strong Brazen Borrower is in the correct shell. Oh, man. Noah's yeah, this so is... hard here. Um, Noah has a lot of really contested cards that he's looking to draft. And, yeah, in his, so... In his draft today. And he is getting caught up in the in, in, in the, the land the race, land madness. Oh my lord! Everyone actually is. So we've got two solid rounds, but there are so many premier, outrageous, powerful cards so that are getting left by the wayside right now, and that, it's killing me. Oh, that my that's God, true. A lot of the me. times, what happens in these in these VRDs is that uh, in round <laughs> four, which is you know is where Steven started it, mm-hmm. um, or usually in round five is where the run on fetch lands and duels begins. Yeah. yeah. Um, that personally, I believe is a distraction for most people. And the person most hurt by it in this draft is Dan because Dan, Dan playing fast bond wheels and not mm-hmm. being able to, uh, get potential landfall triggers, mm-hmm. uh, with, you know, lack of access to, uh, fetch lands. Cause they're almost all gone at this point. How body does he get here if Chad's over here and he's just like, oh, you guys are picking the lands? That's cute. I'm going to pick up Narset, Parter of Ales, and uh, Wheel of Fortune. Well, cool. so that see, that's also Sam's strategy. You know, it's Chad and Sam are in the same lane right now. I think Dylan is too, uh, where their strategy is just like, why don't we just stay in monocolored? 
Like, mm-hmm. there are plenty of archetypes yeah. that you can Dylan, build. no, my man. Oh, what are you guys doing? Oh, God, you're killing so me. So, I, I... The no. thing is, Go I'm, I'm going to give Noah grief for this specifically. Yeah. I was working on... He had this Minsk and Boo strategy that he wanted to work on, and I was uh, doing a whole bunch... Of, we were going back and forth on it. He was... You know, updating his list. I was going through. I was, you know, oh, here are some priority ideas because he doesn't really know where things go in various spots. I was like, you know, prioritize these ones. You can kick these to the left. Wood, wooded foothills and arid mesa appeared nowhere on his list. <laughs> I'll be very clear about that. Out of the sixteen lands that were in his list, those two cards appeared. Oh, there. okay, Nothing and in. oh, all right. Well, so Ooh. now Chad who previously exclusively in blue mm-hmm. has picked up a Dak Faden Dak and a lightning, lightning bolt, bolt uh, after the, after the Tarn and the Island are gone, which yeah. is fine. Like you can absolutely, like it's, it's two colors, like mm-hmm. grow up people grow up. Here's what I'm And Dylan about. into a steam vent. Yeah. So the, here's oof. what I, so I actually, ah, this, this sucks. Dylan and Chad are, like, Chad just decided to hard swerve into Dylan's lane and cannibalize him. I know Dylan. Dylan is our resident Splinter Twin aficionado, and I know uh, that's what he wants to draft. Okay. And Chad is just bombing him here. If I were Dylan, I would have taken that as a note to move on with my life and just, just okay, I'm not playing Splinter Twin the, today. I'm going to play a different blue Now, strategy. especially if you haven't that. been involved in a lot of VRDs, <laughs> mm-hmm. this is exactly the moment where you start I don't want to say get panicked, Panicking, but yeah. this is where you start taking picks that feel like value picks, but mm-hmm. are actually setting you back. And the fact that Prismatic Vista goes in, mm-hmm. is that round seven? See, and then Noah sniping There you go, Grimmon- Grim Monolith. That's an example of one of those highly contested cards that you can definitely see I'm, Jeff or yeah, Dan Jeff, Jeff, Jeff absolutely wanted that instead yes. of a hollowed fountain. 100%. Like the, and they're all getting caught in this trap. I'm talking so much right now. Ex- they're getting caught in the trap of picking these lands when they really do not. And, okay, Dan taking a Mox Diamond uh, yes, makes a lot of sense. Return to normalcy now. So... The most surprising card that we have not yet seen taken, which Dan absolutely wants next next uh, round, is Strip Mine. But like the fact that Strip Mine has has gone undrafted through seven rounds of this is insane. So that's especially especially for Noah, who is already in the red green colors, and he can easily do a Renin Six Strip Mine lock. Yes. This is yes. so and and Noah, Swifty going. So, Ponder preordain with, with green and white, oh, green and white I don't boxes. Know why you're trying to just, oof, my team is just cannibalizing each other. They, Yikes, you know, I'm I, oof, I'm not gonna disagree. I'm not gonna disagree with that because you know, right now Dan has an incredibly cohesive deck. Uh, Noah, Noah going Stoneforge. okay. So S- Stoneforge so a, v- a very very good pick, especially. I mean, he does already have the Arid Mesa, so if you're gonna mm-hmm. have that, then do something with it. And yeah. Stoneforge so, is the best white creature in this format. Me and Noah talked about this, so his strategy was primarily red and green. However, I was talking to him about him, and I told him that if Thalia and Stoneforge Mystic didn't get picked in the first five, if Sam or Steven didn't look like they were gravitating in that way, mm. um, that he should go with the white splash for those cards. Yeah. Um, because with the rest of his strategy, it's going to kind of work out pretty well for him. Okay, now, so we ha- here, here's the thing. Jeff now uh, is representing Time Vault and Thoracle. Yeah. Uh, okay, brutal. well, Dylan, Dylan going a little bit a little, okay. little early on that day. Uh, um, yeah. This is brutal. Okay, so Thoracle could have been used so well yeah, in Dylan's deck, potentially in Chad's deck with the Lotus. I mean... Either of them could have made such good use of that card, and I know it was so high on their list, and it's making those land picks look even worse now. Because look at all these premier cards coming out two rounds later. Now, normally, when that run on lands happens, the people who benefit the most from it are the ones who stay out of it. They decide, uh, look, no, Sam, Sam right now is eating everyone's ass. Sure, yeah. It, mm-hmm. the, <laughs> look at all of the... like opening hand plays that she's already representing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it is, it is nasty compared to, uh, you know, like, Hey, like I don't have to worry about later in the game. I'm in being uh, screwy. And mm-hmm. so she like demonic tutor is still out on the board. Mm-hmm. Strip mine is still out on the board. Uh, yeah. I like, know strip mine is a, very premier card that should be very high on Noah's list. We talked about it. It is in the tier one of, right. of, of like 
within the first half dozen picks. Like, you need to lock up a strip mine. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I know that's high on his list. I, he's getting a little lost in the sauce, I think. Those two fetch land picks, those definitely weren't on the list, so I think it's throwing everything a few cards back, which is yeah. rough. Then, like, this is the difficulty of VRD that we're that we're talking about. Is like it's you, and you're paying attention to seven other people, and yep. y- you don't have a whole lot of time to synthesize all the information that's coming at you, mm-hmm. uh, and that leads to situations where uh, you feel overly hasty about taking the cards that will uh, facilitate your strategy, mm-hmm. aka the 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 duels and, and the fetches. Uh, and then lose sight of the critical components that mm-hmm. like actually let you win the game. Uh, and absolutely. Yeah. Now I do like the direction Dan looks like he's going. He's gotten a couple of cards sniped from him. Like that Narset would probably feel worse for Dan if he didn't pick Uro. And I think Swifty picking those two cantrips and then immediately having Uro taken out in front of him when he mm-hmm. looks like, for all intents and purposes, he might be playing Bant, like a Bant mid right. kind of strategy. Um, and seems a little tricky. I think the main problem is if you getting lands is great if you're willing to prove what's open, so joining the lander on this killer if you're on a list. Yeah, I saw your comment earlier about the playing 25 cards or so lands are great. So the problem with that is just what cards are you missing out on when you pick those lands? And you're miss it, especially within the first five or six picks or something, you miss out on a lot of really good cards. Yeah. I usually only... I am kind of famous in our group for overdrafting or for over prioritizing land picks but it's only when i think i'm in such a niche strategy that none of my cards are contestable okay interesting strategy from dan going with gaia's cradle is that how, how do you pronounce it you pronounce it gia's gia's i, I say gaia's, gi- i say giants gaia's okay gaia's cradle. Yeah. yeah i think that that has the most uh unique correct pronunciation yeah. I mean, you know, it's no Asmarana Marticata is an Akulakar. Hey, hey, thanks, Ad Hammy. But uh, it's it's certainly uh, an interesting name for them to throw out mm-hmm. on a on a text based <laughs> paper this is game. An interesting one from Swifty. Spellpierce and Miscast both coming out, which is kind of represents like you're playing like maybe an infect style strategy or something, something where you want to protect uh, your early plays. Spellpierce is great. You can use it to counter up all kinds of three mana planeswalkers that are very popular in the format. Yeah. Um, Offensively, defensively, spell pierce is just a great card. Yeah, uh, However, spell spell pierce is, uh, I think, one of those counter spells that is has really crept up a lot of people's power lists, mm-hmm. just because like most of the stuff that you care about in this format, uh, for Happens like that, that really wrecks your shop, is uh, is a non creature spell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Th- don't get me wrong, like creature Ooh. spells. That's a very early green sun zenith, especially that's a very late especially green sun zenith. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Are you kidding me? That's a late green sun zenith. Uh, well, pardon me. You know what? No one's forgotten that strip mining exists, and I know uh, yeah, that's what's yeah. happening here, and it's killing me because it's so. You know important. what? Hey, every every draft, mm-hmm. there are uh, there are there's at least one, maybe two, like top six round cards. That just go undrafted because what are the best cards left undrafted at this point? Strip mine would be on that list. Library of Alexandria. No, li- Library of Alexandria has been taken. Oh, it did. Uh, Dylan got it. Round five. Oh, Round five. yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, so it's absolutely uh, I don't strip mine. Am I? And, would I be mistaken to say demonic tutor hasn't been? And taken? yes, that's correct. And demonic, and demonic tutor, tutor are the are the one and two like Jeff should be snapping that card up for sure. Uh, a yeah. Percent. So. Um, uh, so Derek, go ahead and take us to the uh, the the text list, um, and so looking at this, um, we've gotten a lot of the we, power cards out of the draft pretty yeah. well, I would say. I think some of the timing of them is a little weird, but and so <clears throat> that's also a thing that's very easy for Mason and I to say. Uh, we have participated in at least you know a dozen or more of these as the meta has evolved. And so we get a good sense of like what time things can be taken and like what the kind of general group consensus is on the value of these picks. And if you're coming into this format um, for the first time and you're looking at it from a, purely from like a power level standpoint or mm-hmm. like what your mm-hmm. deck is trying to do standpoint, then a person like Sam is going to draft a bitter blossom in round eight or nine. And Dylan is going to draft a, uh, Jason Mind Sculpture in round four, even though our you know our meta 
mm-hmm. says that mm-hmm. you can wait until round seven, eight, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, and that's yeah, not going to be a concern. Absolutely. You know, allowing allowing him to potentially pick up that whole breacher instead because Jason Mind Sculptor is a lot less vulnerable at that point. White Plume Adventure. Yeah, so uh, this is Derek. If you could pull up White Plume Adventure, thank you, Derek. Uh, yes. th- then we'll check out. Th- so this is one of the yeah, newer Derek. cards. Um, and there was some talk earlier, and the, yeah, there, there mm-hmm. Sam goes with the demonic tutor. Uh, okay. Sure. So that's good. That's that makes a lot of sense. Um, so uh, white plume adventure. So the the mono white initiative has been probably the most popular deck in Legacy and Vintage now f- for quite a while. The best deck in those formats. Um, and I was wondering if that strategy could be used in this format because you get you lose a lot of the redundancy from all right. the different because normally you play four copies right. of two or three different creatures that give you the initiative. That's that's typically how those decks play. And they play a lot like the stompy prison decks of those formats. So in Legacy you've got the mono white stompy deck. In vintage you've got almost like that shops esque prison mono white strategy. Now those prison decks generally don't work in vintage or tissery draft. So that led me to think that the initiative probably wouldn't break onto the scene. But Jeff apparently disagrees. He thinks he can do something, maybe some kind of Thassa's Oracle combo, and play the initiative cards maybe as some kind of a backup. What do you think? Uh, I <laughs> At some point we were going to talk about this and talk about uh, the difficulty a lot of VRD players have had over the last calendar year. Uh, particularly over the last six months, I'd say since uh, June or July, um, the absolute volume of cards. Uh, yes, if you could pull up Seasoned Engineer. Um, mm-hmm. So the difficulty that a lot of people have experienced um, is burnout mixed with being overwhelmed. Um, Wizards in the last six months has released, I believe, it's either five or six new products. We'll, we'll call it seven months and six products, which is just an insane amount, especially when we haven't even had another VRD to uh, like in initiate, you know, Absolutely. ingratiate I, a have, lot of these a, powerful cards yeah. into the format and give them some room to test. Yeah, when you so, have a new set dropping every month, yeah, I mean, the card it's so hard to keep up with what cards exist. Yeah. I, there, there are probably going to be cards picked today that I've never seen before, which is crazy because for 20 years of my life, I think I knew every magic card in the game that existed. It was, and now it's not even close. It was a lot more digestible. And mm-hmm. It doesn't help that the last time a vanilla card was printed was like was uh, was Icoria, mm-hmm. which was in mm-hmm. 2019 or 2020. So, uh, oh fellows, oh fellows. Uh, you know, I do think probably a, see, a, I actually a Ruffellos, think the, weird, Lana, the weird stuff that's going on with Jeff right now is that he did pick the the Time Vault and the Thassa's Oracle because the early True Name Nemesis, which I was going to call out earlier for being like a weird choice to pair with like Time Vault and Thassa's Oracle, but it does give you the impression that he wants to play more of that fair blue deck. Oh, now, I, yeah, go ahead. Um, I do think Jeff could run into problems because if he intends on playing some kind of fair blue white deck with these really meaty creatures, that's awesome. That's that's really that's a really nice strategy. But the trick with any of these like mid rangey creature strategies mm-hmm. is you don't put the priority on the creatures because there are a million creatures in the game. You put the priority on the premium disruption spells, like yeah. the counter spells, the, the white removal spells, that type of thing. And unfortunately, a lot of that stuff has gotten taken so far. Yeah, so the I, white removal is is still open. But all the cheap blue counter spells have been getting vacuumed up. Jesus, Derek, yeah. get a hold of yourself. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I yeah, I think um, that Jeff would have been much better, uh, much better suited by taking a swords to plowshare. I mean, at, like uh, swords to plowshare is kind mm-hmm. of a given. Um, mm-hmm. Whether or not he wanted to try to snipe a stone forge before Noah made that a thing, I think Noah took it. Uh, pretty early relative to what his list was representing, so maybe Jeff thought he could get away with it. But I also think that Jeff came in with a plan and was like, "All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna build mm-hmm. the shell around yeah. this." I'm, and I'm in curious. in the process, he is losing out to what Swifty just took. Balance. Jeff's deck absolutely wants balance. I don't think you can play balance in a deck where you have True Name Nemesis. Bro. Yes, absolutely can. Oh, yeah. why? With True Name Nemesis enables you to like that's your auto win on uh, Time Vault, right? You don't. You don't need to play it right now. 
you, if you have time vault, oh, regardless of whether oh, they have blockers, okay. like sure, you, sure, you know, sure. you just yeah, but I mean, you know, sure. any planeswalker can do that too. Theor- well, the- theoretically, but you know, which one in the blue white colors is giving them the value that they need to set up? That? Jace, architect of thought. I know you're a you're an aficionado of mediocre fan planes I friend and I mean come on you're the I you're only the take premium I only take premium <laughs> Oh my god I I'm waiting to hear if I hear a scream from Noah from the other room for the strip mine pick it, I, the, fact that, like the fact that the fact that this fell to Steven oh in the double gosh. digit rounds Round 12 Jesus that's so brutal that's, that, I, I mean Dan has no concern that mm-hmm. Rafellos mm-hmm. is going to get taken, like no. absolutely not. No, absolutely not. Uh, and so and you shouldn't be worried that Cavern Souls is getting taken. Cavern Souls is only contextually good. Cavern Souls is one of those cards you pick when you're like, oh man, a lot of these guys have a lot of counter spells. Like you're playing a lot of, against a lot of right decks that are planning on interacting with your creatures on the stack as opposed to on the board. Yeah. So that's why I usually float out Cavern Souls pretty late. And I'm a I'm a Cavern Souls aficionado. I love yeah. picking the card, but you got to float that one out a little later. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know. Steven loves playing, uh, like human, mm-hmm. human value, like mm-hmm. toolboxy tempo, controlly kind of creatures. Mm-hmm. He's a, uh, you know, meddling mage is not great in this format, but, but he, is, he that's that's the kind of, of yeah. he, he you know the, the the bant or like um, mm-hmm. even like a Naya or Jeskai kind of mm-hmm. creatures list. Uh, that's that's really where he likes to cut his teeth. And so Cavern of Souls is definitely on his radar. And when mm-hmm. Noah snaps it up, Steven's just like, all right, fine, I'm going to burn this shit down. I'm going to take Strip Mine, which you know, for some and, reason. And it, and it helps that, well, it, it should be said that Strip Mine would have been good in like five of these eight players' decks. Like it would have been really nice. Almost S- everyone looks like they're planning on drafting a strategy where Strip Mine would be, strip, would be pretty viable. Strip deck, Mine. If not outright broken. Yeah, Strip Mine uh, is personally, I think, something that eight out of eight of these, it's great. Great in maybe five out of eight, and then good of the card that you want to have. Oh my lordy lord! Oh no! I low key. I know Chad. Yeah, these these has are watched the last two yeah. of these VRDs that I've done here at St. Louis. So uh, so all right. Here here's the thing. Here's what has, I know. Here, he has lists of all the good blue cards. In the world, yeah. Here's here's what has not. Here's what has not been taken. Mm-hmm. Chrome Mox has not been taken. Yeah. Mox Opal has not been taken. Lotus Petal has not been taken. Uh, a lot of those zero mana combo artifact y- cards, y- and I, I I would have imagined Dan would have been like, picking all those cards, but now he looks like he might be moving in more of a channel direction, like more of a green ramp channel direction after the fast bond wheel thing. Uh, yeah, and so uh, this isn't something we've really talked about, and like channel is one of those cards that can either get taken um, really early or not at all. Yeah, you have to have mm-hmm. a very it's it's a lot like uh, Mishra's Workshop. It's yep. one of those decks, and yep. so see, I think I think Stephen is listening in on us because <laughs> that's it. Okay, uh, I'll, or maybe I'll, maybe I'll maybe my... it's just that Stephen and I are very much on a similar mm-hmm. wavelength about how we how we operate with this format. I would imagine that's yeah. true. I will say I I'm not a fan of Chrome Box. I actually don't think I think it gets picked inappropriately most of the time. In the drafts that I've done here, um, Dan usually ends up picking it, and Dan's usually yeah. using it. If you're for, doing it with wheel effects, then it's great. It is. I would say that I sometimes see people who are trying to play fair chrome moxes and fair chrome uh, mox diamonds, aka Boo. just ditch two cards in my hand and make a mana. No, no. It's and I'm not a fan. Not, not no, I, I agree with it, especially because like you know, as a singleton format, if that is something you're drawing off the top of your deck, that is just dead. Mm-hmm. Like I would rather I would rather have an Icker Wellspring than uh-huh. a Chrome Mox a lot of the time. Yeah, uh, especially because like you can get incredible value out of it. Like Stephen has. Uh, uh, Urza in his list, mm-hmm. and he also has ways to sacrifice artifacts. Um, have we seen Underworld Breach get picked yet? No. Okay. Not in this draft. I are you talking about in about VRD or in this draft? No, no, no. We, my group, talked so much about Underworld Breach, and I told these guys, "Hey guys, you know Jeff's playing this draft. That guy is a Underworld Breach fiend." And then I told them right before I walked in here, "Hey guys, Dan, that guy's an Underworld Breach fanatic." Okay. Yeah, like, and we got the recall and the Lotus Seat. Um, boy, and uh, our guy Josh in chat talking about LED. You know what the best LED deck usually is? The one with Black Lotus Underworld Breach. It's really, really good. Uh, it's a very nice combo. Yep, Black Lotus, uh, uh, Echo of Eons, 
um, LED underworld breach. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can even get into Yogmas bargain uh, mm -hmm. nastiness. Like, is there? I mean, there's a bloodstained mire. You can mm -hmm. you can represent black mana. Um, and this like is, Lotus Petal is still out there. We like need all, to get all some of these articulating all, arms for our Derek bot because that guy is just dropping shit everywhere. Wow. Well, Ooh. they them. Derek <laughs> Derek stands for they them. <laughs> Dude, erroneous. <laughs> really, really engineered. Cobalt, king, karate champion. <laughs> this is Ooh, oh oh wow 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 wow. Take Comet Stellar Pop. I love it. Oh, Dan picks channel All right. on cue like I thought he would. Yep. Nice job. Okay, so let's let's take a look at Comet Stellar Pup. Uh, Swifty being yeah, an guy. absolute mad lad. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a new guy. Uh, I have no idea what this does. So he. So I'll just explain so we don't have to read all the text. Uh, it's a four mana, five loyalty planeswalker. That yep. When it comes into play, you roll a die. Uh, it either like puts creatures into play, shoots something, mm -hmm. uh or damage equal to his loyalty, yeah. or uh, you return something from the graveyard to play, like a Sun Titan, or you like okay. bounce a, like a fetch land or some other kind of permanent um, back into play. And then if you roll a six by chance, you just get to double it up, do, you know, roll twice more, which is gasoline. It comes down to the ton of loyalty and like has a bunch of different ways of just putting basically all the abilities, either put stuff on the board or deal damage to your opponent. So it's like a nice sort of yeah. beat down crack. Yeah. Okay. So it's say, like a, it's an exploding dice mechanic for, for yeah, magic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I will say that uh, Swifty is doing this only because he wants to come in here and talk to us because yeah. five mana to fairy is the far better option. And he's just being stubborn. Uh, I yeah, I mean, but why not? Yeah. yeah. Um, the fact that five mana to fairy hasn't gotten taken yet seems a little egregious. So but, I, um, I mean, personally, I think that, you know, to fairy tribal is a very, mm. very viable uh, uh, archetype. We're coming up to the last couple seconds, and we're going to pull someone in here and have an interview. You want to do it? You wanna, it doesn't uh, I mean, if it's, um, if it's Swifty, go ahead and uh, take your player. Um, I will say, how do you feel overall about the first 15 picks of this draft? Oh, my God, and picks. Sam going in with the Lotus Petal, yep. uh, which was not even on her list. Uh, but, like, if you can, yeah, if you can what make you it happen. Overall, recap. One second, uh, let's go. First 15 picks messy capitalizing that's not a sentence but it's it's uh it's out of order all right i'm gonna send someone an interview here yep. here's what i'm gonna leave here's what i'm gonna leave with saying i think this may be one of the most disastrous drafts i've seen in, in recent memory i what the i think i think I'm, that the, the i think the decks will turn out fine i think the, sure the, or, the order in which these things were picked was sloppy Round for everybody right. but Sam. <laughs> Who do we want? Who do you want? I'll send someone in. Uh, let, let's get Swifty. Yeah, let's yeah, get Swifty in. Uh, Swifty I'll, I'll go get Swifty. Um, oh, okay. And then sure. in the meantime, I'll, yeah, kind of wrap up with your thoughts. I can't help but think that this is one of the... I don't think this draft is going very well. I think a lot of people are picking a lot of very bad cards. And they're really fighting each other when they don't need to be, is what I will say. Some people, I think Dan has rotated out very well. And we got Swifty coming in out of the booth. I know you're, that Swifty, I think, is a master of the last round pick to try to get <laughs> himself in here to talk. I, I think he does it every time. It's impressive. I think I have been the first, the interview every time I've done Very this. Very good at it. Well, we were all giving grief for picking Comet over literally any of the better cards that could have been. That I'm not going to say what they are, but my god, man. What are you doing to yourself? Have you read this card? I have read this You card. did a set review of Unfinity with Steven on this channel. Yeah. And yeah. talked about this card. That's true, and it is, it is a banger card, but I mean, bro, you've got Urza's Saga and Miscast and Balance. Like, what? What are you going for here? What's this? What's the plan? Just got control. <sighs> okay. Yeah. It's just gonna be control the board and find a thing that wins. Uh, watching Swifty roast Mason's review. Yeah. Um. Okay. Then why pick Miscast? What are you trying to protect with Miscast? That's like a. So you picked Spellpierce mm -hmm. Miscast, and Spellpierce makes a lot of sense because it covers a lot of the first three turns of the game. A lot of different. 
angles that people come at you. But miscast is almost exclusively used to protect your own stuff. It's a cheap counter that I like to have in my suite available, whether it's sideboard against other decks that will try and protect their stuff with counter spells, or mm -hmm. it's just, you know, a one mana counter spell. It's a one mana pretty specific counter spell though, right? It, co it counters what instants and sorcerers? Yeah. It's not it's not going to be a main deck, but it's a very strong sideboard card. That Interesting. with all the blue drafters around. Hmm, but are those blue drafters? going to be playing instants and sorceries uh, early, look at, early and often. Look at, Steven's got a bunch of instants that he's going to want to protect his combo with. Well, Steven drafted Tolarian Academy and yeah. that guy's going to be playing a bunch of artifacts. Yes, but do you see that those two picks right there of misstep to Mystical Dispute? He's going to, he's, so? yeah, he has counter spells where he's going to want to protect his combo. I think, and I then, think that those cards would have been much better than picking Miscast, though. All right, moving on from the miscast thing. That'll just be my own personal. Uh, I'll just roast you on that after you leave. You can't defend yourself anymore. Uh, yeah. What do you think about everybody else's draft going so far? What do you? What are your thoughts? Uh, uh, seems like we have a lot of fighting going on. A lot of, a lot of yeah. Except for Sam. Games. Sam just gets to sit in her lane. Sam's been AFK farming the yeah. draft so far. I'm very impressed. Sam's Sam, perfect play so far. Yes. Great, great choices. Um. It's inter I'm trying to, you know, get a sense of what Steven's doing because his picks seem all over the place. Like, there's the Tinker, Urza that kind of go together, and Oko, you know, makes artifacts go Tinker, mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. you know, Noble Hierarch, Strip Mine, Chrome Mox kind of... Yeah, I like what Steven's doing. Oko, Urza, Tolarian Academy, yeah. all those things build a really nice sort of concept, but... I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, I don't know what his final plan is. Um, Dan looks like he's... Just going big green dudes. Or sure. green something. Sure. Like Makes sense. He's got dorks and an Uro right now in the cradle and the green sun, so... What do you think about Jeff's draft? I'm interested to see where it draft... Like, he started with the Time Vault Mana Vault, and then uh, has... Took his Thoracle, which we were all like, yep, yep, this Jeff draft. But now he's in the creature, like, going this white weenie style. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. It's interesting. Like, I had plans for sideboard cards if I was in a whitish control deck against Thoracle mm -hmm. combos. But now I don't know if that's what he's doing, so... Mm -hmm. All right, last question. What is the What are the next 15 picks going to look like for you? What do you, what do you think need to secure before anybody else moves in and steals your lunch money uh it's i want to get the nice thing is there's plenty of good blue cards there's plenty of and the white cards no one's fighting for the controlling white cards mm -hmm. so i can sit and wait so it's going to be a lot of you know what's this person doing what's what what silver bolt do i want against them it's mm -hmm. going to be grabbing those sideboard cards next like seeing Sam grab reanimate, I almost grabbed uh, the rest in peace now, like mm. these last two mm. picks. I almost grabbed it right then, just to say no, because Noah's right. got white cards. Mm -hmm. All right, we got Dan's coming to the booth. Thank you, Swifty. Good luck yep. in the next uh, round of the draft, buddy. Yep. Keep it up. We got Dan stepping in. Dan started his draft off with the Time Walk, Soul Ring, Fast Bond, Time Twister combo, the way we know Dan's a combo <laughs> dog. This guy loves the combo. Um, and looks like he's. It looks like he pivoted a little bit to a more <laughs> green centric strategy. I was mm -hmm. speculating that you were going to pick up a channel action. You have. Yeah, it's right there. So is this uh, is this something that you were planning on doing coming in, or is this an adaption to the other blue players in the draft? Looking like between Jeff, Bill, and Chad, they look like they've taken some cards that I would normally see you play. Mm -hmm. Those are normally your your cards. So is this an adaption, or was this the plan all along? Well, this was a, uh, I decided I had two plans coming in today, uh, and mainly was to follow my heart and actually just draft, like, well, follow my brain more, less so mm -hmm. follow my heart, try to draft good cards that I saw, and I wholeheartedly believe that Time Walk is underappreciated. Okay. It does mm -hmm. show up, you gotta, you, that was a, one of the innovations you showed, uh, was the last VRD we had, you were third seat, you got... You got Ancestor Recall Time Walk, which yeah. is the silliest thing I've ever heard. I agree. Going back. Crazy. <laughs> and 
Yeah, it was a, uh, let's figure out what I'm going to do. Just take powerful cards when I see them. Mm-hmm. And then I noticed four people were in blue. Yeah. And the only green card taken at the time was Oko. Mm-hmm. Which I was... Your Lotus player decided to go blue. Uh, mm-hmm. Jeff is a Mox Sapphire fanatic. I was going to give him a lot of grief in it, but we were talking about other things. Me thinking that um, Sapphire is the worst Mox. But yeah, a lot of people planted that blue flag early. Mm-hmm. For sure. And uh, looks Sapphire like they want to fight about Mox. it. That's... How are you feeling about your fast one at the moment? Fast one, I think, is... That was a, uh, I wanted to kind of solidify to sort of choose green. And um, sure. whenever I got around, I noticed that uh, I like to do this thing when I see power. Uh, like I said, time walk, I think, is a little unappreciated. It doesn't go, it's not like an auto snap pick first round a lot of the time, mm-hmm. which it absolutely yeah. should be. And mm-hmm. then time twister is people forget that it's power in mm-hmm. a lot of mm-hmm. situations because it, it feels weaker than the other eight. But yeah. So as of right now, your plan is to play fast mountain time twister in your deck. That's, Correct. I'm that's gonna, part of the strategy. Part of the strategy. I mean, it's the it, right now. It's going to be the classic play minute orcs wheel, and then gotcha. Refuel. Are you worried that people seemingly in response to your time twister pick have picked full breacher and narset and cards like that? Is that does that concern you, or is it not really something you, you're too worried about? Not really, because um, it's sort of like a plan B situation. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, one of my the plans was. Uh, focus more on like green sun toolbox because yes, you absolutely. have the green sun zenith and it never goes away and then you can just pick up sideboard pieces the whole time. The yeah, me and Brandon were ready to fight about that green sun pick. He called it really early. I called it really late. I kind of agree. I was uh, it probably should have gone where like Uro went, but mm-hmm. I was just afraid mm-hmm. because you know me and Steven are fighting. So. Uro was a smart pick. I think you snatching it away from Swifty mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. Tell me about the uh four. What is it? five, six picks where you picked uh, Tropical Island and Windswept Heath. These... Did you not feel like fighting over colored spells in that spot, or were you really anxious about getting some mana fixing? Uh, one of the things I find about this deck is if you're going to play like a heavy green deck, mm-hmm. one of the downsides of doing that is you get to play a lot of forests, and if I want to play Time Walk and Rebellos in the same deck, really you want all of your lands to be, you want Rebellos to be tapping for two or three that turn you play it, and then you want to just kind of blow people away. So That makes a lot of sense. All right, what do the next 15 picks look, for, look like for you? What do you think? Uh, or is there anyone in the draft particularly that you that you need to see what they're doing to make your draft make more sense to you? So this one feels like a lot of ships sailing because, like, you can see Sam, no one's in black. I'm mm-hmm. basically mm-hmm. the only green player except for Steven, and it's I feel like the you. only ones he wants are he, like, took Noble for me and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. But it's trying to figure out what the good spiky sort of green hits would be. Right. Well, as a Green Sun Zenith advocate, mm-hmm. uh, I look forward to seeing you crush people with the most incredible Green Sun toolbox <laughs> ever. Good luck to you, Dan. We're going to, fingers crossed. Absolutely. All right, let's get Brandon in here. Let's get some more, what, we're going to get some more picks underway? Let's do it. I want to see some some action. You I, you can get started when you get back in. If Dan is echoing the sentiment from out in the bullpen... Uh, people not thinking that there's a lot of fighting happening in this draft. That is surprising to me because to me it looks like all it looks like NASCAR. Everyone just swerving into each other every which way. Um, I'm going to have to give Chad a lot of grief for some of the stuff. Though, I'm going to have to, maybe I'll have to sneak out and make sure uh, Ch- I don't know that Chad's ever played with Hull Breacher before and be like, hey, you know you can target them with their de- with your deck, Vaden, to make them discard two cards and you make two treasure, right? <laughs> pretty, pretty dope. Nice combo there. Um, Dan saying that uh, the channel green deck was sort of part of the plan all along is interesting. A lot of weird picks, otherwise not like it's hard cuts. Yeah, I would agree. It's a lot of just it's a lot of weirdness. We're starting back up, and we got a flush destroy remand. So more people fighting over more cheap counter spells makes enough sense, I suppose. Though at this point, I would probably be looking at less redundant cards, maybe some of the more unique threats you can pick up, or securing whatever second color you think you're going to be in. At this point, I don't know if Dylan can realistically play. Oh, okay, so we're we're back into it. Um, Oh, yeah, we are. Uh, let me get my headphones on. Uh, What's the word from the floor? Okay, so uh, Stephen was having a dialogue with me about what he should be taking. So what we'll probably see from him him right here is Phyrexian Revoker. Um, hmm. but Interesting. Our Interesting. conversation was wrapping up as soon as that happened, but uh, I, I recommended something else, and that's because Dan 
picks immediately after him. And if Dan in these next two spots does not take a card that I have harped on incessantly last mm, draft, interesting, interesting. which is Hex Drinker, then mm. he has majorly fucked up. Uh, the uh, so Steven essentially wants to go Revoker here and then Hex Drinker. I think that should be the opposite. I think he's more worried about Noah than he is about Dan. Mm-hmm. And also, like you want you want mainboard cards before you want sideboard cards. That's just yeah. The Thought Lash coming in. So now we finally see the card that Jeff yeah. is planning on comboing up with the Sass's Oracle, uh, which makes enough sense. I'm still a little. Puzzled. I'm still curious as to what exactly he's planning on doing here because the combination of creatures he's, that he's drafted with the Thought Lash. Yeah, he's playing old people magic. It's it's odd. I'm I'm so curious as to what he's going for here. I I, I, I can't wait to see the deck fully formed because right now he's looking like a very low disruption deck with a very sort of threatening combo heavy strategy that he's backing up with these initiative creatures. And maybe there's something that I don't know about the initiative comboing up. And uh, I I think it's... Um, but to I me... I think it's a like more just of an issue of like failed execution, like yeah. missing out on a lot of the early stuff that he yeah. really wants. Yeah. Um, so Noah, we've got Endurance. Can we uh, just go ahead and... Sl- slowly scroll up through Noah's picks to remind us. So we're doing an Eldrazi package. We've got Cavern of Souls. Um, we've got, yeah, City of Traitors and Ancient Tomb and Mana mm-hmm. Crypt and Stoneforge. Uh, yeah, and so Models. Noah, so, Noah yeah. really wants to go for this sort of red-green mid-rangey strategy or Naya mid-rangey strategy mm-hmm. uh, featuring all the Eldrazi. Okay. He, he picked up the Mana Crypt first uh, and the Karn to go along with that sort of colorless style threat yeah. strategy. I can talk about it a little bit more. He's oh, uh, no. the white splash comes in, so I know that Noah has hex drinker in his list as well. So I'm curious as to which of the three of our little hex drinker players might uh, snap up. I mean, to the earliest. What I will say is that to this point, uh, up to this point, all three of them have failed <laughs> because it uh, it needed to be taken this previous round. If um, I could give advice to my team right now, yeah. I would be shaking Dylan like a child that you definitely shouldn't do that to. Yeah. And telling him, please, for the love of God, pick LED and Underworld Breach the next time it comes to you. Right. And just try to draft that combo deck. Uh, so I will say this right now, and you had Swifty in the booth, and I don't know what he talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, his list is looking very good. He has yeah. so many options mm-hmm. going forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... One of the things that you're, you're not going to see it anytime soon, and you, Swifty might not, not even pick up on this, but he's running Balance into Fairy. So there are uh, three value cards in particular that I want to see Swifty take. Mm. One of them is Ancestral Visions, mm. Uh, mm. and the other two are Urza's and Mishra's Bobble. Um, Ooh, interesting. And so the reason you run those cards, especially because Swifty has two Moxes, is turn one, you put down a land and a mox and as many bobbles as you can and cast an ancestral... Balance to empty your hand. An ancestral vision. them all back in to get the cards back. And That's interesting. It's, It's uh, you know, you want... Theoretically, you want to see that more in Steven's deck. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, Dan. Oh, Steven. Didn't Narset already get picked? I believe it did. Okay. Uh, So... That might just be a mistype because I can't really see Narset being super good in Steven's deck. I'm actually a little confused by Steven's deck. So I actually think Swifty and Steven are doing similar things in the sense that they're they, trying to draft yeah, they are. three colors, mid rangey sort of strategy, and open and keep themselves open for different things. There's your extra. Yeah. Um, however, I do think I look I like the look of Swifty's more based on his first like five picks. I would say those were a little bit more open, whereas Steven picked some different um, sort of two card comboy type things. Yeah. Um, and I think ultimately that might not work out very well for him, and it makes it feel like some of those picks might have been a little wasted. Unfortunately. Yeah, you really... I mean, like, if you have to pivot, you have to pivot. But right. the pressure in this draft is not coming from other people. It's coming from yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's coming from, like, going a little bit too wide on, like, 
the run on lands or like the run on yeah. <laughs> green one drop creatures. Mark uh, Dan, Dan's got to Dan has got to be hurting. I, I like I just can't get over this. This is the second or third draft in a row where I'm like Hex Drinker is just so much better than everything else that's been taken very, very good. for the last six it or seven very, rounds. Very good. Yeah, intuition is an interesting one. I wonder if he has a very specific strategy for it, or if he because the the thing that intuition is used for the most in uh, constructed magic is by just grabbing three of the same card and you just jam it in. Um, you can't do that in this format, so I'm curious. You, you maybe can't. he's got you know three different cards that come with this oracle, you know, thought lash, demonic consultation, yeah. and something. Oh, I'm so, curious as to what the intuition is actually going to be used for. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but we are currently in round 17 or 18. Yeah, 17, 18, something like that. 17, yeah. Okay, so uh, Derek informs us that we are in round 17. Mm -hmm. And I want to get an over-under from you mm -hmm. on what round people realize that, that that our five blue drafters, or six blue drafters, uh, realize that Mystical Tutor is still on the board. Well, I think the only blue drafter that's that interested in Mystical Tutor... If I had to guess, it's going to be Jeff. Uh, um, Chad has Ancestral Recall. <laughs> that's true, but if you're going to spend a Mystical Tutor to get Recall, and then you're going to cast Recall, you're essentially using two cards to draw three? Uh, so what Mystical Tutor does in a deck where you have uh, Ancestral Recall and Force of Negation is it allows you to put a free counter spell on top of your deck and then draw into it. Um when you really need to counter something. Um, and like, obviously you're not going to be holding on to ancestral that long if you don't have to. Uh, but it is one of the texts that you can use and it is still card advantage when you're holding up mana for counter spells and, um, and, and the like, and like, uh, let's see. I mean, Chad also has, I mean, to be fair, Chad is running a lot of blue value creatures. Um, so I'm actually kind of curious now what value is coming or how much value is really coming out of Lutri and Snapcaster Mage because it seems, at least up to this point, that the majority of cards drafted in the, these first 17 rounds are not legitimate targets. And when that happens with instants and sorceries, especially in blue-affiliated colors in mm -hmm. this draft, mm -hmm. that can get pretty rough on you. Um we saw that Steven took the red elemental blast. Did Chad take one of the, did Chad to take a pyroblast earlier? Pyroblast I believe so. was taken in, by Dylan in round 12. Okay. So, um, I, I, what I will say is that I think Chad is leaving a lot of value on the table. Yeah. I, I'm sure. It'll, can it, it can definitely come together. I'm a little bit concerned that, uh, some of the, Obviously, best, obviously taking a Shivan Reef and a bright and a whatever pathway and that stuff and uh, Cascade Bluffs, not ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Dirty drafting tech when you know uh, what's it when uh, Ponder and Preordain are still out there, right? Uh, at that time, but uh, you can absolutely still find yeah, cards find, that, that are good. You can find backups and stuff. I do think Lutri is like a, a a top six. Like you should pick Lutri should be picked in the first six cards in every draft. Um, I do think the card is legitimately so insanely powerful. Yeah. I would have taken it if I were Dan. Absolute, like a thousand percent. You've got a time walk in your deck. You're never missing out on anything by taking Lutri. You always have access to it. It's always good. Right. Even if you only have one or two targets in your deck. Like Dan might only have one or two targets in his deck. It, um, yeah. But Lutri is still going to be insane because doubling up on your time walk or whatever is I mean, it's super strong. It's um, Lutri is such an interesting card in that it never, <laughs> even if the value it adds is minuscule, it always adds value to any deck because mm -hmm. it is always available from the sideboard unless you're running Jace Squadron <laughs> Hawk. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man, someone should definitely draft Squadron Hawk. That's a dope choice. Yeah, so we see Jeff follow up his um, his intuition with Sevian's Reclamation, which is interesting. 
Wow, Jeff picking Thalia, which is a great pick, and it's one that Noah missed the boat on hard. Uh, I think. He, uh, he's yeah, I, I, kicking himself I agree. For that one. I agree with that. And so now, Sam. Um, now Helm that we're we're at pick. Line. Well, uh, yeah. So we've got Helm of Obedience, the Leyline, and Dothy Voidwalker, and mm, that right yeah. there is mm-hmm. just an incredibly strong, like, discreet package, um, where you are playing Dothy Voidwalker for a number of reasons, not you know. Not the least of which is its leyline esque uh, ability, but like it's a three two unblockable. Awesome, mm-hmm. you're playing discard spells that just feed free cast triggers. Ooh. Expressive iteration is probably one of the single best card draw cantrip spells in the entire game. Yeah, and we have seen it come after every single other one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, and so now choice. this may seem very. Uh, confusing Sam taking Phyrexian Altar. Is it because w- she's going to combo it with Gravecrawler and Blood Artist? Uh, n- she's going to combo it with Gravecrawler. Blood Artist is not a part of the package. Okay, interesting. What's the uh, what's the death trigger? Uh, the there are trigger? there's probably about six of them. Ooh, geez. One of them uh, is Meat Hook Massacre. Ah, Meat Hook Massacre is a nice one. One That's of nice one. one of them, you know, it's harder to get rid of than Blood Artist. Uh, it also works as a I mean, listen. Could be Altar of the Brood. We listen, don't know. We, you know, listen, we don't know. It's, we don't know. Uh, I will say that it is not. not. All right. Well, uh, you know. Because I don't think she knows what that card is. <laughs> she never watched well, any of my old dress. Is there a mill card that she is not aware of, Brandon? What uh, are you even doing yeah, with Yeah, yeah, because she thought, I was, she, she thought I was such a beta cuck that she never paid attention to any of my old drafts. <laughs> She's like, D- you went, you went three and four, you, oh, you idiot. You absolute. Ba- I love the idea of Sam and all three foot nine of her, yeah. looking squaring up to you, and be like, wow, what a beta. <laughs> yeah, you know that's hilarious. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, addressing a couple of things in the chat. Caterberg says Steven's playing Moneyball, just picking the best cards. I don't know if you can say that after you pick Phyrexian or Roker that early. Um, and then whatever he followed up with Yavimaya Cradle Growth. He, I'm not sure about that. Josh in the chat saying the Lutri argument is the same as the Fetchland argument. Um, the argument is different in the sense that there are a hundred Garillion lands in the game, all of which can fix your mana, whereas there's a single Lutri and there's nothing that is comparable to Lutri. It is a completely unique effect in the game. Yeah. I, um, companions are so sparse. There's ten of them and, and seven you can't, of them are you can't fulfill the... Requ- like, you automatically... Unless you go out of your way, you automatically fulfill the requirements of Lutri, mm-hmm. and you have an entire draft. You have an entire like two or three hours to increase its value, and that's up to mm-hmm. you if you don't. Mm-hmm. But like at the very least, if you are sitting board stalled, you can just cast for you know for three mana. You can get this in your hand and cast a three two flash. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's uh, it cannot be understated how like how like how little <laughs> under uh what am i what is the word i'm looking for uh um, how, understated it the, but th- how little of a downside there is to pick to, Lutri, to, yeah. there, it has the lowest downside of any pick mm-hmm. and you know the upside of your fetch lands uh there there's some upside you get shuffles out of them you get to fill up your graveyard you get to fix your mana these yeah. are all really nice things the upside to Lutri is like, I draw six cards instead of three cards. I, I take two turns. Uh, I uh, get to Mystic Confluence yep. and bounce your entire board and draw four cards. Like, there's a lot of upside to be had with Lutri, especially yeah. in, like, uh, in the last couple drafts, especially I used in BRD. along with uh, Aether Vial yep. because of how many good three drops there are in blue right now. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, a lot of good options there. I mean, yeah, you've got, like, and Chad has pretty much all of them. So... Not really. Uh, okay, so um, Swifty taking. Uh, I I don't I don't love this from Swifty. Um, although he did get the he, the swords to sp- uh, plowshares and prismatic ending, which kind of prompted me to say like, yo, Swifty's Swifty's list is uh, is for real. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I'm a, I'm a little surprised Noah didn't. Uh, Noah really needs to pick Jid. That's gonna be really. Uh, well, just now going with Cauldra complete. Yeah, um, which, which not is, not bad. I mean, mm-hmm. like you, you got to take it at some point, anyways, mm-hmm. and it's better to not leave it hanging out there. I believe what I remember. I'm concerned about. I, I remember. I, th- I think it was VRD seven where uh, mm-hmm. there was a certain player who drafted a Stoneforge Mystic, and then um, a player on the wheel was cajoled and coerced into 
taking back to back Calder Complete and Batter School <laughs> because it really, I don't know who would, like, that seems like a really shady, underhanded <laughs> thing to do, but I believe that somebody did, oh, uh, you know, funny. just like uh, peer pressure another player into taking out all of the upside from the Stoneforge Mystic pick. Yeah. But that's that's not the yeah. truth there. But Hagen is certainly but the only player Jeff, that can. Jeff, going with the with the GTA. With, yeah, so with Hagen's the only player that reasonably is taking Cauldra because he needs something to tinker into. And with the way his deck is looking, it wouldn't surprise me if he wants something to tinker into that he could also cast. Yeah, so that, got quite a bit of that, that's production. what we were talking about um, as well. In mm-hmm. uh, I, the most recent Discord draft that I've participated in, which was still quite a while ago, um, I was trying to, uh, one of my goals was to create a tinker list that doesn't rely on black, bri- uh, that, uh, that does not rely on blight steel mm. to win. Um, that, that creates Stick a more like seven man artifacts. Uh, yeah. So six and seven man artifacts. And so what I landed on for those, uh, you know, like a toolbox mid range tinker kind of deck, what I landed on was uh, chromatic orrery as mm-hmm. a seven drop because it comes out like you can, you have three mana on the board and one of those is artifact mana you can tinker into chromatic orrery and then just immediately cast a five drop planeswalker and so you're getting around a lot of the removal and like interaction uh, especially if, especially if you have a mox yeah that's uh, true. I like that. it's kind of like the show and tell and i'll put in omniscience exactly as exactly. opposed to just trying to put in the big thing and else. you know the upside to that is it's not something that is sitting around in your hand mm-hmm. uh when you're tinkering for it as omniscience and emrakul or whatever have to be Right. Um, and so that is th- like, th- there's a, there's a lot of value in that way and it just, it accelerates mm-hmm. things and stays on the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I think the problem that uh, Noah has with picking culture complete there is that JIT is still on the table and from the right. macro I mean, view of the draft that I can see, the JIT is more valuable it than It looks than like Cauldron. six or seven people are trying to draft creature mid-range decks like decks that are going to kill you yeah. on the board with creatures which is i believe where the format is headed uh it's been more it's been it's, it's been, been heading that way for the last year, year and, and half. this one in particular the people who look like they let out <coughs> a strong combo um opening uh, yeah. yeah like strong combo ambitions look like they've gotten shaken off of that quite a bit so jeff looks like he's moving into a much more fair direction dan looks like he's moving into a much more well, I guess he, we, we'll, Dan, we'll I see when the crater hoof. direction he's trying to yeah. ramp. Right. But ramping is still putting stuff onto the board. Your default state is that you're still attacking your opponent to death. And that's where JIT's really good. Like JIT right. is at the end of the day probably something you a, sideboard pretty frequently. Yeah. But is so powerful in that type of a matchup that it's almost unfair. I mean, I mean it's banned in modern for that reason. You yeah. Just, it's impossible to play around. Yeah. I mean that really makes Ragavan go bye bye. Um, right. Uh, um, so I would have liked to see Noah pick up the JIT, and if Calder Complete gets sniped from him, that's okay. You've got Batter Skull, you've got other options. Yeah. Um, that's the direction I would have gone with him, but oh uh, well, ho-hum. Okay, so we got a, a, a Tree of Tales from Steven. Um, I don't know that there's any real threat, but I th- you know, those, those are, card, are yeah. cards that Steven has to take in order to get Tinker, to Larian right. Academy uh, in a valuable place. Um, and also tinker have too. tinker like targets, yes. Yeah. Nice and, to... and being able to, t- like, you want to take Tree of Tales first because your Urza can turn them into blue mana. Yep, um, absolutely. So, you know, Seed of the Synod is not the uh, end, mm-hmm. end all be all of the artifact lands. Uh, Certainly not bad. We saw but... <laughs> Papke pick up some extra lands, probably just because he's looking at Dig Through Time and figures he can pick up some yeah. wild shock lands to, like, fix his mana up or okay. whatever. Okay. I don't. I can't imagine he's planning on trying to like play five colors worth of stuff here, but I, it's a little odd. Marsh yeah. Flats and Verdant are going to be hard to use. But. So now at this point, uh, the two most valuable green cards that have not been taken that Noah, particularly with uh, this Bloodbraid Elf, should be highly considering. Uh, number one is Sylvan Library, mm-hmm. uh, and then anybody else in green. Uh, <laughs> Questing Beast is still the mm. best mid-range creature in this game, in this format. Questing Beast is nice. Um, Noah's picking Bloodbraid Elf over it, um, which, you know, would occupy a similar space. There are also some format of Planeswalkers that he might take I, if, instead of that. If you're in green-red, you want to be 
in the space of both of those. You, you Gruel Haste is uh, an exceptionally strong mm-hmm. uh, archetype in this format. Um, personally, I think that uh, Questing Beast just it, it, it wins games better. You can set up Blood Braid Elf to be extremely uh, effective, mm-hmm. but... Um, yeah, you want to talk about yeah. cards like Mystical Tutor, putting stuff on top, and then cascading into it. That's a nice choice. Maybe right. we'll see I mean, Dan with the Mystical world, Tutor take something like a, like a Shardless Agent or something goofy. Or, actually, maybe um, some of the green cards that let you play things off the top of your library. Now, well, th- those cards don't typically interact with instants and sorceries, Yeah, but maybe I, there's something out there. Maybe maybe he's got some kind of a strategy that he's playing. Yeah, maybe he so read he, an original Mystical Tutor and he thought, Mana Source, I right, can just put so, well, Fast Mod on my top of my deck. That's a Mana Source. Uh, Dan, Dan has um, Channel in this deck. Mm-hmm. And so, card view. obviously, um, you know, with, with Draga Tree Speaker, then like a Channel uh, Green Sun Zenith is like imminently doable. And what you're doing there is just getting Crater Hoof. Uh, part of, part of the shortcoming of Green Sun Zenith in my estimation, Mm -hmm. uh, it, number one, it doesn't get, uh, what's it called? It doesn't, (laughs) uh, no, uh, it it doesn't get non-green creatures. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so if they do it all and there's, you know, there, there are channel targets that are really, uh, that like if you're trying to do it on turn one or turn two, yep. then, you know, all, an all colorless kind of thing. Yep. So obviously Dan wants Crater Hoof Behemoth, a card that approximates what Crater Hoof Behemoth does that is all in colorless is Decimator of Provinces. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's like, hey, let's get a big fat hasty boy Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that is imminently castable with a, you know, a Raffello's Gaius Cradle, mm-hmm. Jiraga mm-hmm. Tree Speaker kind of, kind of deal. So uh, Sam has planted her little yeah. combo flag. She's, yeah. I mean, actually, the flag was planted when she picked the Phyrexian Altar. Yeah, but yeah. Grave Crawler's coming down. But now it makes, hand, now it hey, makes sense to the game. rest of the players mm-hmm. at the table. So now they just need to figure out what she's going to use with that Grave Crawler um, coming back into play. And, uh, and so, over and over yeah, and the answer to that is, uh, one, Champion of the Perished. Uh, or in, in no particular order. You've got Champion of the Parish. Oh, uh, interesting. You've got... Uh, that Car- might be a first pick on BRD, in BRD history, right? For, for our group? Yeah, yes. I, also because it Cups only came good. out in... Yeah, it was a couple, like, couple years. I guess cool, only, not even a year and a half ago. 12 sets ago, which is, you know, four months. Yeah. Um, um, so you've got... Ooh, four Spike. Um, I don't know about that, but whatever. Everybody likes a four spike. Getting someone with a four spike, that's uh, that's, that's a, a square on the bingo card. I mean, card. you know what? I bet four spike will do a lot of work against Jeff. I'll mm. say that much. I bet it does a lot uh, of work okay. in the field. It's a tough one to play around. Also, you can definitely next level yourself by trying to play around it. Now, days and four spike are both floating around, but they're by different no. players. Kind of oh, oh, floating. Okay. Right. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, but Champion of the Parish, basically how this mm-hmm. combo, this Zombo works uh, mm-hmm. is... Let's say, all right, turn one, you play Champion of the Parished, pass turn. Turn two, you play another Swamp, you cast uh, Dark Ritual, play Phyrexian Altar, and then cast Gravecrawler, and then you use Phyrexian Altar. <laughs> oh, she got it out already. I was... Contamination? This is yeah, so um, nasty. Contamination with a card like Bitter Blossom or Gravecrawler, and Gravecrawler. Um, is basically your Black Blood Moon. Yeah. But instead of being able to play around it by having basics, you have to play around it by having colorless cards because yep. you're not making anything other than black mana. Yeah. Um, definitely tricky. Um, I will say this is one of those situations where, and I'll harp on this until the end of time, that the black green removal spell suite of Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy and Maelstrom Pulse and Witherbloom Command and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all these cards. All these cards being good at answering a variety of non-land permits yep. and uh, a bunch of different stuff. Uh, really, really nice. You can float your mana in response, let the card resolve, abrupt decay at Assassin's Trophy, it, uh, tear asunder it, et cetera, et cetera. I, I think that especially relative to how underdrafted uh, the the black-green colors are and mm-hmm. how uncontested a lot of those cards are, mm-hmm. uh, 
that is, it's, it's one of the most underdrafted archetypes relative to its potential effectiveness, especially because you can very easily have like a turbo depths crop rotation package with it. Mm -hmm. Those are the only two colors where you have a Urborg tomb of Yagma slash Yavimaya cradle of growth effect Mm -hmm. where you get, Mm -hmm. where you have two out of 40 instead of one out of 40 chances in your deck to turn your dark depths into something valuable. Yeah. Uh, You can also spin out, uh, with that black green archetype and go towards a green sun zenith strategy. So you've got green sun yeah. zenith and you've got um, and if a you're suite of different green creatures yeah. like Ramanap Excavator. You can double it up with, you could play more of like a Jundi kind of strategy. Yeah. With like a strip mine and a red and six and, and different things like that. It's a really nice strategy that it doesn't look like we're going to see anyone employ here. I don't, I wouldn't imagine Sam is going to pick up Bayou and Overgrown Tomb and go into uh, green here. Yeah, she, she, seems she, like she's she will ready, not, yeah, she will not be doing that. Black. And that's one of the things we talked about is, uh, you know, being that she is so young to this format and just like magic in general, mm-hmm. uh, she got really overwhelmed trying to deal with like the rush on fetch lands and like how like taking picks to fix your mana and at what time. And mm-hmm. as we've seen throughout this draft, that <laughs> that is a problem for yeah. even oh, seasoned so that, drafters. That was, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. You just take the angle of I just want to play a monocolor deck because I'm sure that I can make a good deck out of it and don't have to worry about it but you can you can really get in the way of your own draft if your uh if your decisions are compounded by the fact that like Mm -hmm. how am i going to like uh how am i going to make this work when i've never done Mm -hmm. uh any of the long-term studying necessary to know how to like fix your mana base Mm -hmm. so all right so we've got steven coming in with uh fixing his mana and pentad prism looks like a, a rinky dink turd of a card because it's pay two to get two mana uh, the, it is one of the most deceptive cards in VRD mm-hmm. because you can, especially because Steven has the two most like empowering cards in his deck for uh, that mm-hmm. uh, card, mm-hmm. which are uh, his third pick, Oko Thief of Crowns. I'm actually going to say three. Uh, one is Tinker. <laughs> two mm-hmm. is Oko Thief of Crowns. And Urza. Four, Tolarian Academy, uh, and then uh, Urza. So his yeah. first mm-hmm. eight picks all make Pintad Prism a little bit better, have, a little bit stronger have insane there. upside. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Absolutely. you can play it, uh, you can fix your mana to cast something else, you can tap it to add blue, then you can either turn it into an elk that, all right, whatever, it'll be a 3-3 that can attack next turn, or you can just uh, immediately tinker it away and get something even beefier and pay for whatever thing you need to do. Like it's a, yeah. it's a deceptive card. Yeah, so no, totally solid. We see Jeff pick up Luris, which is also like a premier card. Uh, one of my, one of the guys asked me, one of the guys who hasn't done mm-hmm. many BRDs, he asked me if Luris was, was playable and oh. playable as a companion. So and na- the running joke is kind of that like when people draft Luris as companion, they always do remarkably well because it's almost like you're forcing yourself to construct a good deck Yeah. by, by, Using Luris Chameleon. Jeff okay. obviously is not. He's S- got Thought Lash in his deck at least. Yeah. Um, Sa- Sam, having already picked up all of the pieces that could theoretically be contested, mm-hmm. uh, uh, have has no real reason to um, run a Depths package in the deck. Like, I mean, the, mm-hmm. the reason is you get a twenty twenty flying. And you get Vampire Hex Mage. Very uh, nice option. Correct. And, you know... Vampire Hexmage, guess what else you can do with it other than just blow up Planeswalkers? Telephones, Planeswalkers. Uh, you can skull clamp it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Also, well, two one first yeah, for two pre- Pressures, yeah. stuff. Um, I talk all... That I gets always, to sit on the board and do damage while you're waiting for them to play a threat you get to deal with. It's. Yeah, I always talk about this and I would actually say, um, you know, I've seen uh, 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 some of your VRD successes coming from a similar place, uh, which is to say that um, when your default state of your of your cards, especially your like quote unquote combo cards, is I can put this into play, I can attack with it, I can pressure my opponent's life total, I can pressure my opponent's yeah. um, life points mm-hmm. or uh, planeswalkers. Um, I think that's a really nice place to be. And vampire hex mage is like okay, well it's a two card combo, but it can also be a first striking blocker. It can also block. Uh, it can also uh, cross people up and take out their planeswalkers, stuff like that. It's, an it's a un- really it's nice un- backup to have. Yeah, it's an uncounterable uh, destroy target planeswalker. That gets to do damage. Yeah. Bef- like in I've the meantime. seen you with similar success with like, um, you know, like a Nissa who shakes yeah. the world. You know, like this. Yeah. Okay, I'm threatening to make a hundred mana. 
Or I can just beat you to death yeah. with the three threes. You know, that's a really nice. Come backup. at me, bro. Come at yeah. me. That's why, I mean, Dan's going to have a similar feel with a lot of his little dorky creatures, which is, yeah. well, I've got all these little dorky creatures. Um, the first time I came down VR dude with you guys, I played elves, and the number of times where everyone would look and be like, okay, Mason's threatening them like eight, ten mana on turn three, and he's attacking for four damage instead. Wow, that's <laughs> impressive. Oh, boy. Yikes. Things are clearly not going well yeah. for Mason. Like, uh, I mean, obviously, kind of you, you won with your with your elf deck, which was, which was very good. Um, and you know, threatened what essentially what Dan is doing mm -hmm. with, uh, less stringent mana requirements, uh, yeah. you know, being able to have those built into the pump effects. Yeah. Um, and I don't, this is, this is definitely off topic, but, uh, did you run Allosaurus Shepherd in that deck? Was it even out? At I don't point? think it was, I don't think it was printed. I okay. Think yeah. Was, I think it was like God, just it's good. Yeah. Makes me want I to mean, revisit the deck. Right. Yeah, because, in I mean, in a in a elf deck like that's you don't even need like you still want crater of behemoth mm -hmm. but like yeah. you don't need it no, no because no. you I, just and you certainly don't need the card like azuri or anything dan actually i'm guessing will pick alisar shepherd and i know that's on noah's list of cards he wants for his sideboard especially with as many blue players right. there are so it wouldn't surprise me if one of them picks it and the other goes oh damn it like that was on my list i just oh, okay, yeah. wasn't assuming uh um, so i mean glimpse of nature uh, collector oof nice one yeah dan, definitely dan is going to be really incentivized to pick a lot of these green creature bullets because with green sun zenith he has a lot more access to them that yeah uh, absolutely true post board. and so. uh eventually i'm assuming because no not that not anybody i see is interested in having a dryad arbor yeah it's, no but i imagine dan probably will with the yeah. green sun um in it now the only other reason to generally put dryad arbor in your deck is if you have skull clamp but that is Sam's right. uh, card, and I don't think she's going to pick a Dryad Arbor just for that. Okay, so now, did is Fable of the Mirror Breaker mm -hmm. something that Chad wanted? I This was not on Noah's list. This is a little improv from him, yeah. um, which is fair. He's gotten some cards taken from him that he certainly did want. So I'm a little And Steven curious. going with his with his, uh, his preferred Tinker target, Portal yeah, to Phyrexia. Yeah, Portal Phyrexia. So nice. uh, let's go ahead and have yeah, Derek pull up Portal to Phyrexia. This is a new card from Brothers War that does some very nasty things. Mm -hmm. uh, when it ETBs, your your opponent sacrificed three creatures. And mm -hmm. uh, if he gets this off at the right time against Dan, match over. Yeah, uh, against a lot of the people in the, in the field today. Because... Taking out one or two of your opponent's creatures, like a Liliana of the Veil minus, not yeah. super strong a lot of the time. Okay, I'll sack my Grave Crawler and then I'll replay Three it, is usually that threshold where, like... You're hitting your whole board. You're hitting the for whole board. For the most board. part. And that's not where it stops, and there's a reason it costs nine mana normally, but this is a VRD, baby, mm -hmm. and we've got a Tlinker. Uh, so at the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Notice it does not say your graveyard, yeah. from a graveyard. Uh, totally uh, this can... This can... Completely turn around, uh, like a whole breacher lock. Mm -hmm. uh, this mm -hmm. is like, yeah. Once this hits the board, if it does its intended effect, like if mm -hmm. you don't have four or five or six creatures out there, yeah. Then uh, this this just is the harbinger of of the mm -hmm. end. And even if you do, depending on what those creatures are, you're gonna make them sacrifice half their board. Yeah. Then you're gonna reanimate stuff that you can block up with. Yeah, and it's gonna be. Know, super strong from there. So we've so got portal, Jeff with a spell stutter sprite. Yeah, it's a little odd. It, it goes along with the strategy of trying to play lots of creatures, and like suit them up with pants, like jit and, and yeah, whatever. So and get your opponent on the beat. Spell down. stutter says inter, uh, counter target spell. Uh, okay, it's number of Excel fairies less. you control, yeah, not, so it's not a revealed. Like a spell snare type right, of right. Or mental misstep, which he has mental misstep. I think. Um, um, it but, is. Uh, I, 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 I don't know how well suited it is for this deck. Well, you know, normally uh, if you pick Spellstar Sprite, you sort of incidentally picked up a card like Brazen Borrower and... But um, Chad already has all this. Right. Yeah. Uh, along with um, Vendillion Click and those kinds of things. So Jeff's not picking up any of the ancillary fairies. He could do Mutavolt. Um, that's sort of a popular classic play uh, of Magic's formats past. Yep. But... At this point, it's probably going to be like Mental Misstep Sprite, yeah. you know? Which is not bad. Yeah. It's certainly a good card, but we'll see. It's yeah. it's a good card with less upside than I think you would normally have. So uh, we've got Dylan and Chad kind More of fighting picks. fighting over Man. these is it, is it cards? There are still uh, is it lands? a lot of good blue cards on the and table. And 
you know, we can obviously at this point look back and say, well, there's an obvious mistake in your land picks, which is that Fiery Islet just went when you took mm-hmm. Cascade Bluffs and Shivan Reef or whatever earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of a symptom of a, a larger problem, which is that especially over the last three or four years, we have hit the tipping point uh, into the availability of dual producing lands Mm -hmm. that just like, it makes it almost irrelevant. Like you can, if you need to fix your lands and you don't get the premiere in terms of fetches or duels, Mm -hmm. you can always get, you know, outside of somebody, uh, like being strictly in your lane and doing what kind of Chad and Dylan are doing, you mm-hmm. can always just like, all right, I guess I'll get a pathway. I guess I'll get a filter land. I guess I'll get a pain land. I guess I'll get a tap land. I guess I'll get a fast land. I guess, you know, all these things. Yeah. So I want to, fortunately these guys are just killing each other and it's a real shame. Th- I, um, I, I honestly think, and I'm like, obviously Nepo baby, etc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I honestly think that Sam is representing if not the strongest, uh, certainly in the top half of uh, decks. In like, mm-hmm. it is coherent. It is, mm-hmm. uh, it is problemless. Like people are going to be able to, uh, you know, figure out ways to beat it and get around it if they, like, mm-hmm. you know, if their hand doesn't get torn apart. Yeah. But uh, so let's look at these last two picks and just conceptualize a first turn. All right, you play a swamp. Mm-hmm. You evoke grief, mm-hmm. and in response, you cast Malakir Rebirth on re- on grief. So mm-hmm. you're down uh, for three cards. Mm-hmm. You have them discard their two best cards, and you have a 3-2 Menace on the board. Yeah, that's kind of a classic modern player yeah. right now, uh, even quite popular in Legacy. I mean, she's also got Reanimate, so she can yeah. evoke grief, have it die, reanimate it back. Uh, the the best part about that is that you get that first peek and you get to see do mm-hmm. I do I need do to I get need something to else it. out of my opponent's hand or can I just sort of play a, a slower game can I take something out of their do hand and then reanimate that you know if I'm playing against Dan can I get a big creature out of his hand or something so yeah. there's a lot of nice options there yeah it's like what Jeff I w- picking up more protection and stuff Glenlord Archmage is a little odd but it's it's a nice resilient creature if you think you're going to play a lot of, against a lot of fair mm-hmm. matchups mm-hmm. um it's nice. Um, yeah, you know, I'm really Cabal Therapy is a pretty funny one. I don't think Sam is unfortunately going to be in a good position to play a card like that. Uh, she, it's yeah. a it's a card you need a lot of experience to play with. It's so. it's one that uh, that was kind of bandied about, and that was it's on the edge of main board versus sideboard playability. Mm. Uh, I think you know you'll see as the deck gets fleshed out and zombies start hitting the board. Mm-hmm. But despite the fact that it's zombies, there's not a huge amount. There's, there's not an overwhelming like traditional zombie like recursibility. Sure. Um, yeah, you yeah, know she doesn't get the, she doesn't get the chance to play four grave crawlers. Right. Uh, and also probably don't want to. If if the strategy is to beat down uh, a grave crawler kind of card, when it's just sort of well beat down is the backup, but really mm-hmm. we're trying to combo here. Uh, I think it makes more sense to not fill your deck up with a bunch of it, goofy cards that are really only threatening. I think attacks. I think if there if there was any card in the deck that Sam would want multiple copies of, uh, that it's it either comes down to Phyrexian Altar or Gravecrawler, because both yeah. of those things enable everything else. Yeah, well, and Gravecrawler um, enables itself when you have multiple right. copies, so that's kind of a nice... Yeah. That would be a nice idea. Yeah, especially Dead because... especially because We need a Squadron Hawk rule for Gravecrawlers, goddammit. That's a self-referential <laughs> card if I've ever seen one, okay? Come uh, on. Absolutely. Let's change the rules right now. Mm. Um, we'll so it, yeah. we'll call it Brandon's the best rule. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, Swifty now Phyrexian Ooh. metamorph that is a very late Phyrexian metamorph. I it think is. I is. think if Steven had thought of that uh, earlier, Certainly. if that was more, you know, I think Steven initially was uh, looking into doing a Boros style like initiative deck, kind mm-hmm. of like. I really, it's funny. I thought that um, in the same way that I thought Jeff and Dan liked to draft. Uh, similar decks. Yeah. I also thought to myself, Sam and Steven like to draft quite a few similar decks, especially Steven's had some success online lately playing these uh, mid rangey fair, Mardu, Creech. green black, white black style decks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got a history of that kind of thing. I he, remember he does. me and him at the first draft I ever played in were fighting over Thoughtseize. 
and he's gotten the better of me now in many drafts yeah. uh, since that first one, where I picked it, like, second, and he went, wait a second, what? I wanted that, but I was going to take it fourth or fifth or whatever. And it's so, like, nah, son, you take it first, you're, if you ain't first, you're last. I, and since then, he's gotten one over on me, like, every time we've drafted together. He gets it from me all the time. Th- see, that is, that's the exact opposite of Steven and I, where I <laughs> have, like, he beat me the first, like, two or three times we played, and then since then, he is, even if he goes six and one, I'm mm-hmm. that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he just always beats me to the punch. Oh, on the there we go. Punch. That is, yeah, that, there's, he your, take, there's your boy. Talking about how Steven and I are, uh, are, are not dissimilar in pieces. drafting. Uh-huh. Uh, he's taking my Jeez. signature card, and Sam very That's smartly really uh, taking yeah, unlicensed yeah, hers. Really nice so um, now that we've kind of gotten this far into the into the draft, I can say without giving too much away that Sam's plan coming in was to be monocolored mm-hmm. and to spend her first roughly ten to twelve picks taking all of the things that other people. Uh, could potentially like either splash into black to do or are just like those real high value cards. Mm, yeah. um, and then from there, taking her next picks to uh, kind of take the hate that r- would really mess her up because for the remaining, let's say 10 to m- maybe 10 to 12 cards of her main board, she doesn't, no one else is taking a plague belcher. Right. No one, and especially at this point where she's so thoroughly cleansed the draft board of any black showing up, mm-hmm. uh, she doesn't have to worry about like you know even just like a meat hook massacre. I think like not that she even really wants it, but like who is gonna splash more into black to get a toxic deluge or fatal push? Like, yeah, that. So everybody else staying so succinctly out of black, outside of Jeff taking what is presumably a demonic consultation at some point. But I mean, so far I, he doesn't have. Even touched he doesn't it, have so. the ability to. Yeah, I, 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 his I, I, I honestly is not looking great. Je- um, Jeff's uh, nice Jeff has a very stuff. long history of not even of not playing the like cards that he's drafted in the first five picks. Last yeah. last draft, he, yeah. didn't, he drafted I, Teferi I think, yeah, and didn't play it. Yeah, I would say that's it. a strength of his. I think, I think his ability you have to, to just know. move away, you know, he gets he catches a lot of hate with a lot of his combos in, in a lot of ways, and I think his ability to just move on, hey, you know what, we tried, we'll move on, we'll, we'll pick something else. Jeff does really well in these drafts, mm. uh, and he sort of always finds some angle to try to combo his opponent out. Absolutely. Um, that's that's how Jeff likes to play, and then yeah, hey, you know, we you finally see the question. Man, goes. you and Steven, man, you guys just. Oof. Well, really I did, I did tell him that he needed to take Hex hey, Drinker, you know and then you do the interviews next time. I'm going out there and telling my guys what to pick. All right, I'm watching you, buddy. <laughs> I, I mean, kidding me? Like, hey, I got a list over here. Okay, I, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh I yeah, mean, like it even matters. Yeah. Okay. I, first of all, they'll figure. I, to be fair, it was more he was asking me about like you know, or do you think you know what do you think about like doing crop rot and then like mm-hmm. doing like a turbo depths, depths package? Oh, and I was like, that's I mean, a great question. Why pick crop rotation this late after you already know you're not going to get dark depths from me? Oh, because he, he's, uh, he's just trying to find Tolarian Academy. Uh, he, number one, he's trying to find Tolarian Academy. Number two, he's trying to find Yavimaya Cradle of Growth. Oh. Um, but yeah, I mean, interesting. Wait, what? What? What is he doing with Yavimaya? That's so important. He has Nissa. Oh, okay. He also has he also has strip mine. He has strip mine and crucible. Like okay. That, the, like yeah, oh, okay. So he's got strip mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crop rotation okay. is a, Can he just a, is a card that is. Six, no one picked he, it. Ever. Yeah. He, yes. He he could and he probably should. Oh, he, he, and he picked up a Tyga. So I think yeah. I think he's I think he's kind, yeah. He, he so he's doing a, a very he's doing blue green with a very slight red splash. Yeah. yeah and yeah. like Ren and cool. six is is one of those cards that you do splash into red for. I think mm-hmm. I think it's probably the single most like solitary or like semi solitary splash that we've seen in this format is to be able to get a get a little rent and six action going. Um, um yeah, Noah over here also yeah. just filling he, out the man. Up a- What's up with you Chicago guys? You guys What's are up? you guys are really fighting over all of these like C tier lands. Um I which which land did you just pick? Uh, no, I just take took uh, Car- Carplus and Forest. Um, so, Carplusion Forest. When you're trying to play Thought Not Seer in Reality, I, I, I reckon is a triple yeah. color land. So I recognize it's, that. It's uh, it might 
I if I were him, I'd probably be picking some premier side, some some better sideboard cards. Yeah. But uh, if he just wants to shore up his mana now and pick some sideboard cards later once he gets to see a little bit more of one, I think Noah has gotten out of the stage of the draft where anything that he thinks he could pick will be contested. So yeah. I think he's kind of gotten to that spot. He was pl- planning on drafting Red Green Aldrazi, and the first 10 picks or so were highly contested. He probably misordered a few things, but at this point, we're so far removed from that stage. That's At this point, he's going to look to pick up, like, uh, a couple of the other smaller Eldrazi creatures. Yeah. He's gonna l- maybe look up, look to pick up like a Bone Crusher Giant. Uh, um, maybe just an grudge for anybody that. there, Council's Judgment does not have an E in it. Okay, cool. As somebody who took Council's Judgment uh, a bunch of times, and mm-hmm. the, by the way, the the sorcery speed in double white on Council's Judgment is it is rough. Uh, it is much rougher yeah. than you think when it yeah. when you need it. Mm-hmm. You need it. But that is just like the first card in from the sideboard for me. It is, it's a white, you get to pick whatever you want. Yeah, to... March the Other Worldly Light is like the new, new yeah. uh, Council of Judgment. And generally, I think it's going to perform a little bit better on average. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to agree with that. Especially in a draft like this where it's looking like most games are going to wind up with, that, with all the players having five yeah. lands in play. Yeah. Um, Okay, and Bone Crusher really Giant from Noah. This is this is much better. This is where I like to see him because you have to go back to, I guess, Matter Resh- Bloodbraid Elf, yes, and then Matter Reshaper and Lelia ten picks ago for the value creatures uh, in in Gruul. Um, Bone Crusher is such a strong card because in that in this color combination, mm-hmm. you are you have a glut of three drops. Um, uh, yeah, I was actually going to comment on that specifically. So a big part of Noah's strategy is trying to go uh, one to three. So he missed out on a few of the mana dorks that Dan picked up from him. Yeah, Dan um, Dan really did a number on Ideally, that. Noah would have wanted to have Noble, Ignoble, and Bird's Paradise all in his deck. Yeah. Um, but that's not really on the table at the moment. Uh, and instead, what he's got is Mana Crypt, which would allow him to play a three drop yeah. on turn one. Or Ancient Tomb City of Traders, which allow him to play one on turn two, yeah. which is really nice. So a big part of Noah's strategy, you're not going to see him pick up a lot of two drops. You're going to see him, you know, really jamming a lot of the threes. That, yeah. That's where he wants his curve to right. start. And then he's not afraid to try to play four and five mana spells after that. Yeah. So, And I, I think, like, Bone Crusher works so well with that uh, strategy because, like, you, he doesn't, he's not guaranteed to get these, uh, uh, these, you know, on, on turn one, he can have two mana, mm-hmm. uh, but he's he can't go one to three all the time with such yeah. a premium, obviously, on the moxes and the everything else that, mm-hmm. that gets right, you there. Right, right. So he, uh, he ideally wanted to be in either the seven or eight seat so that he got yeah. a shot at two of the fast mana cards yeah. to enable more of those uh, three mana opening right. starts in the same way that a lot of those legacy and vintage stompy decks want to do the same thing. They want to yes. open up with uh, a three mana threat. And we saw him draft Trinisphere. So, I mean, that's another that's another way to point yeah, out, like, hey, sense. anybody who's trying to do all these, like, cheapo one-mana cards, I want to just, you know, wholesale make you spend your mana a right. little bit more honestly. Um, a lot of the prison cards from larger formats do not translate well to BRD. Chalice the Void doesn't translate as well, and Staring Bridge doesn't translate as well. What do you guys think? Uh, so, at... Oh, are we on break? Uh, yeah, why don't you um, talk to... Like, I, I think I think at this point we can definitely bring Sam in. Um, sure, let's talk to Sam. And you then Sam? You want me to talk I, to Sam? I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll chat with her. And Are then you sure? You, I want a hardball really bad. Here's a question. You could ask her this, okay? Yeah. Here's, here's my concern. Here's what I would ask her. Yeah. Um, she'll have no, no response, but you could talk to her about it. The history of mono black in cube draft or more powerful uh, legacy formats is that mono black's a tough one because the types of cards that are for mono black are very split. You have a group of combo cards, you have a group of aggro cards, you have yeah. a group of disruptor cards, and somewhere in the middle of all those things, you have to find an actual deck. Right. So she probably doesn't have a lot of historical context for magic, but right. I'd be interested to hear if she thinks that will be a problem. Cool. Have fun. Get in there. Yeah. That's right. All right. So um, here comes Nepo, baby. And uh, this is uh, my lovely girlfriend Sam, not Mason. That it would never work between us. We're we're, we're both way too opinionated. Uh, so 
how do you feel like your draft is going? I'm just like trotting along. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you have had. I'm contested. You know, you drew this strategy up, and you know it was something we talked about. It's just like, hey, you know, stake your claim in black. Take the take the cards that they could be worried about, and then just just go ham on them. You can take whatever you want whenever you want. How's that working out for you? Are you feeling less stressed? Much less stressed after the first, like, ten picks. I was like, I'm good. This is fine. No one wants to fight me on this? Yeah, it doesn't seem like they do. Um, are you Are you even looking at what the other decks are doing, or are you just kind oh, of... Oh, no, the strategy is you don't get cards. There you go. <laughs> I, I mean, don't want to know what they do. Uh, so, in that vein, I guess, what... Uh, are you concerned about any of the other decks, or you just... You don't... You just don't think about it. Don't. Uh, just don't let them play the things that you're scared about. Pretty much. Pretty much? Uh, okay, so because you were so, you were able to so thoroughly get people off of black to the point where I don't, I mean, I can't really I, scroll because I mean, Derek is. the fetch lands, but that's about it. If they wanted to spend it, they could. But right. I don't, I don't think they want to. Yeah, here, if you don't mind, uh, get closer so we're uh, picking you up on mic. Um, but like you were able to pick up a lot of the cards that in play testing, you were just like, all right, let's, let's not put this in because we're not guaranteed to get this. Yeah, let's see how the not deck works. Get both tutors, probably not so get not the only did, meaning not the mocks I want. yeah, not only did you get exactly, you got, you wanted the third pick, you got the third pick. Uh, so you got your mox jet, you got, uh, you, your vampiric tutor and you were able to get the, va- uh, the demonic tutor. But on top of that, like, you have a glut of riches in the sense that, like, now you have to decide whether you want to run Lotus Petal in your main deck or not. Um, it does enable your combos faster or, you know, turn one, you can be getting, uh, you know, some of your three drop big beef lords out there. Um, Mark was saying I have a 46 card deck. And choices will be made. I don't yeah. know how much sideboarding is happening because that makes me nervous. Yes. Uh, so, it like that's one of the things I don't like doing <laughs> just because... No, thank it, You know, if I'm going to make those decisions, I tend to uh, really over-agonize about them. Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience. And so, like, I would rather just not sideboard and have the main board do the sideboard things as, like, an afterthought. Um but, you know, you, there's some helpful people out there who might be able to give you some insight into, like, hey, if you're about to go play Swifty or if you're about to go play Jeff or whatever, uh, you want to take Here's out this yeah. for, for that thing. Um, and listen, it is, at its heart, it's an individual event. But conceptually, <laughs> conceptually, it is a team event. And uh, we've got a really, really good crew of people here who uh, who want to see everybody do well and succeed and uh, just play the most exciting, fun games of Magic. So um, I do really encourage you to just Talk just to I I I I know that I would. I said I would never encourage you to talk to people, especially because you don't want to, but. Some these these people are your friends, so you know they'll they'll give you some some quick, helpful. Uh, advice um, on what to sideboard. Um, so for the rest of everybody <laughs> out there, uh, what what are we going to see out of the next 15 picks? And can you just, in your words, tell us what your deck is going to want to do? Uh, I think it's time to go zombie. I think it's time to take all the zombies that no one wants. Uh, can you describe to our viewers what the uh, what the combos or the synergies look like? Relies on Phyrexian Altar and Grave Crawler coming back, so you need to zombie out. Ayara, uh, Meat Hook, just ping them for one. Infinite. Pew, 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 pew. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it seems like the strength of your deck is that. <laughs> they are your rivals, not your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ah, crush them. Uh, you know, it seems like the strength of your deck, not only do you just have, like, uh, starts that strip them of their best stuff. So if they're coming in with anything less than like a really solid seven uh, cards in their and opening that's hand. the other struggle looking at your hand. I don't know what disrupts you the most. Should I take the most powerful card? Should I take the only card you have playable this turn? Yeah, uh, that it does add a little bit of a wrinkle to it. Um, 
and you'll just, you'll just have to see as I, I think a lot of it is just like seeing as you go. And a lot of times there's not a right answer. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, you've got a lot of different interchangeable combo pieces, uh, and in this deck, like in tomb essentially works like, like a tutor. So you, you just one mana put grave crawler in your graveyard, which is already where you want it to be. Yeah, so, taking my own hate. yeah. And, uh, it like the fact that you've got Leyline and Dothy Voidwalker and Tormod's Crypt and all of that stuff means that these people and Graft Digger's Cage especially, these people are gonna have a really hard time throwing you off your game. So, <laughs> uh, I want to say, uh, good luck first of all, but uh, congratulations on not <laughs> getting pivoted out of your plan. Uh, I did not and, have a backup, <laughs> and I'm very proud of you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, go ahead and have Mason send somebody in. Um, but yeah, that's my uh, that's me out kicking my coverage. So, <laughs> all right, Noah, come on in. What up, friends? All right, so uh, we are through the bulk of this. the The decks are shaping up. Tell us, are you uh, are you feeling good? You f- how are you feeling? Oh, dude, I'm feeling great. I got the one card you... I wanted, which was Minx and Boo, and I'm having a blast drafting red green. Just hit you with stuff. Uh, really, don't know what else I'm gonna do. Uh, one of the cards I am excited to pick up here that I don't think anybody will touch is uh, is it Haywire's uh, Might, new card in Brothers War, one okay. colorless, uh, one one or something. Yeah, we'll have uh, we'll okay. have Derek pull it up. Yeah, super sweet card. Uh, both Karn, Wish Target, as well as, I don't know if I'll play it main board, but excited to play my good creatures and hopefully have the mana for it. Uh, like, well, you know, it, it seems like you've got quite a few cards that produce multiple uh, colorless mana. You've got uh, your your cavern, or not your cavern, excuse me. You've got your uh, your city, you've got your ancient tomb, you've got uh, uh, the, 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 the Grim... <laughs> Whatever. Grim yeah, Monolith, there you go. Yep. Uh, so um, now you've got Trinisphere in here, and it seems like that makes sense, uh, given that like you want to be playing at the three mana cost yep. uh, level of things. Um, is that is this going to be a main board card for you? I think so, because yeah. I'm at that point where I'm noticing everybody's deck. I don't really know how I'm going to interact with them at some point. So I feel like we have all these very either controlly decks or uh, combo decks that uh, that'll just really punish them. Yeah. Uh, I got the fast mana. I think like Steven's deck will probably be the best at dealing with my uh, like turn and stuff like that. So um, yeah, picked it up. Probably gonna main board it. Uh, I'll see what the the rest of the picks come through. But I actually don't really know what else I'm gonna draft. Like once upon a time, super late pick. Should have been earlier, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I think there's a, like that, so. there's a there's a lot of stuff on this board yeah. that uh, traditionally goes a lot earlier, and uh, probably could have served some people um, really well. But um, do you think you're gonna lean into this kind of trinosphere like uh, log jam your opponents a little bit more, uh, like perhaps by going with like a blood moon or something like that? Uh, I think the Blood Moon, if I do pick it up, is going to be a pretty late pick, uh, just because I don't think it's going to be that impactful okay. currently on the board. Um, and that, like, co- like if I am going Blood Moon, I was thinking about maybe picking up like a Talisman or two to yeah. have the colorless mana as well as colored mana. Um, so if I do go that route, it might be a little bit of later pick. Um, but just at this point, pretty comfortable with my deck. It'll yeah. be turn one three drop and hope it gets me there. Uh, and kind of finish out, like, the Wish board and a few other, like, Pain Lands for yeah. know, Thought Not and Eldrazi. I mean, looking at your deck, uh, a Talisman is really one of the ideal cards for you. Like, given the fact that you have both the Ancient Tomb and the City of Traders, like, mm-hmm. that's a very reliable uh, turn one play. And you, uh, you were, were you able to get the Mana Crypt? Uh, yeah, I, oh, the okay, Mana yeah. Crypt was my first pick. Yep. So that's three yep. right there. Um, and the fact that, you know, you've got Ragavan treasures, uh, potentially popping out, like you, it looks like you'll regularly be able to get, you regularly be able to have four mana on turn two, mm-hmm. um, 
whether that's all colorless or or not, you know, yeah, yeah. remains to be seen. But but still, uh, yeah. It, though, sorry, I no, it really helps with trimester too. Yeah. The the one thing I do think I messed up on is I I picked up a. Uh, 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 Stoneforge Mystic, and I don't know yet if that's going to make the cut or not. I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to play it, but it just feels weird. And then I picked up Archon because I was like, oh, maybe I will get, continue that white splash with that little disruption yeah. aspect. So I think it's going to end up making the deck just because I made a mistake to buy it, you know. I, I need playable. You know, I, 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 I will say this, which is that Stoneforge Mystic, I in, in my estimation, far and above uh, uh, the rest of the field when it comes to white creatures. Mm-hmm. And you've already done the hard part, which is taking another draft pick to get the Cauldra. So like, as long as you can regularly and reliably cast it, there's no reason not to run one of the most back breaking, like low threshold plays that exists yeah. in VRD. So I, especially cause you know, you've got Ragavan treasures that you're creating. I, I would highly encourage you to, you know, to make sure that that stays in your main board and just keep an eye on being able to, to get that, uh, cast as soon as you possibly mm-hmm. can um beyond that uh because we're uh, going to be wrapping up and getting back into the last leg of the draft uh what uh other than minsk and boo actually <laughs> just real quick if you can just let everybody know number one why you love it so much and what you're trying to do with that oh so i played competitive magic for a decent amount it's been a while since i've played but uh, I came back and there was this Minskin boo card that my buddy, he's like main legacy player, uh, shout out Mitch Lodi, uh, and he loves that card. And then I read it, I was like, bro, it's a hamster. You got the fling, you got the beats. Uh, I just love the card. Yeah. Solid four drop. Uh, it actually is being played in like a, a lot of legacy decks, like Red Green Lands, mm-hmm. uh, which I own most of. So it's just such a cool card, such a solid planeswalker. And because it's a new card, yeah. you, you know, you catch people by surprise because they don't know what it is. And it's just like, Hamster beats. Cool. Um, are and this is the last question. Mm-hmm. Are there any other, let's say, without naming names, any other red green planeswalkers that might be making an appearance on your list today? No, I was gonna like start googling towards the end there, but I don't have anything on my mind at the All moment. Right. I was thinking like, I know Mason really hates Arlen Cord, so I was thinking of just playing that just to kind of meme on just, him. Yeah, but, yeah, for sure. But, yeah. One of the uh, one of the best things that we get to do. On, in these VRDs is make Mason feel peeved and irked. Yeah, and so exactly. we all come together for that common goal. Uh, anyways, good luck out there. I uh, hope it. the rest of your draft goes really well. And uh, let's get back to it. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon. Right. Yeah, for sure. And would you send Mason back in with a Budweiser? Two. Or three if you want one. I don't really care. <laughs> Mason, idiot. <laughs> Uh, so we've heard from uh, four of our drafters now, um, Sam, uh, Dan, Noah, and Swifty. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll try to get a, a look in uh, with Chad or Dylan at the end of this and see which one of our is it drafters reigns supreme, uh, whether it's the Splinter Twin combo or uh, whether it's the Chad Lord. It's wherever. You, it, it's good for... Either way, it's just as long as you point it okay. right there. So uh, yeah, we heard from you know, we heard from Sam. I, I didn't get into this is more of a conversation for you and I yeah, about yeah. Uh, the history of black. Uh, we didn't get into that. Um, she's just excited that she gets mm-hmm. to draft stress free. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, that's nice. Yeah, and you know basically what you're going to see from her uh, at this point out, she's just going to draft all the zombies that uh, complement her synergies and her combos. So we're going to see uh, the uh, Carrion Crawler, I believe it's called. Oh, yeah, that's a nice uh, one. Carrion Crawler. Uh, we're going to see um, Nested Shambler, mm-hmm. which uh, Ooh, yeah. which works very well with not only Contamination, but especially with Skull Clamp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, just the fact that it puts bodies out there uh, that you can, you know, both clamp or just sacrifice or, you know, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, on Noah's side, uh, you know, it, there were definitely mistakes made throughout the draft in mm-hmm. terms of like <laughs> these All picks and, <laughs> and I'm not, what do you mean helping Chicago? No, I, no, no. You know what I did this morning? You know what I did this morning before we came here? Okay. I had worked 12 hours yesterday. Okay. I get off work. I drive an hour over to Chad's place. We all get in the van. And we're driving. My phone's on like 
15% because I had forgotten to charge it the night before. <sighs> I'm exhausted. I'm dying from work. I'm so sore. Everywhere, every muscle in my body today is screaming because uh, I work in construction. I had a very hard day yesterday. But what I did with the, the dying light of my cell phone a is I ember. crawled through and reorganized Noah's pick list and I color coded it for pre- like super premium cards, this is second a coach. tier cards, and then third tier, like, hey, these are like, you can intermix these with like premium sideboard cards and stuff and, and don't worry about them too much. They shouldn't get picked really yeah. early. And you know what the man does? He takes a look at that bright, shiny, color coded strip mine and he says, well, I'm never going to pick that fucking thing. What? What a guy. Am I right? It's just, literally just saying, right there. Saying, I'm going to run red green, and if strip mine, Ruin 6 falls into my lap, fuck that. Fuck <laughs> That. You know what I'm saying? Also, Garbage. He's got Besaju with the Ren and Six, with the Strip Mine. Yeah. With that's, the, did that's, anyone even take Wasteland? Am I no, crazy? No. Well, no. see, here's the it's, thing. Waste, it's actually. It, there's a 50% chance over the. In, in the history of our recent drafts, there's uh-huh. a 50% chance that it will either go undrafted or be like the last. Like within. Picked in the last two rounds. It yeah. is. Uh, yeah. You know what? And that's f- honestly, you don't. That's like, there's, okay. a lot of basics. there's a lot of basics. Wasteland is whatever. It's not a premier fucking card or anything. It's a later pick. I get that. You float it until later. Only one or two players want to play it. That's fine, especially with how many non basics people are yeah. playing this time. You should go for it. Like this is a good scenario to have yeah. it. It's it's you know what do you what do you call it like variable oh. information. Yeah. All okay. Right, let's, so here's what I want to do. Yep. Let's just run through real quick and talk about like what everyone's deck is. Okay. So Chad looks like he's on the more like uh, spell velocity playing yes. lots of things, triggering his creatures yeah. through playing spells kind of deck. I really uh, I think that it's you know Chad's doing kind of an is it. Is it prowess isn't the right word, but like you get, getting yeah blue red spells, um, and one of the cards that Chad is really going to want to get uh, is the uh, Derek computer uh, verbally describe the blue red card from Brothers War uh, that really yeah, does some freaking work. Iconic blast or the other one? Uh, the ooh that one is. So he probably wants this one he too. He picked that one. He picked uh, that one. Okay, so he's got third pass account of class. Yeah, and nice. then the other one is the one that buffs. Uh, You're talking about the wizard that like buffs yeah. all your stuff? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't think that was from Brothers War, wasn't it? Or was, was it, it from another Was it from Dominaria yeah. United? Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, we'll pull that up here yeah. in a second. There we are. And so whenever he casts this creature, yeah. I, I, I definitely, I didn't mention this to him because, again, I'm a, a man of integrity and I'm not about to try to help my players out while they're in the middle of a draft. That would be, whew, gosh, could you imagine passing picks to players? Anyway, but... Uh, well, if I do yeah. it if I do it to everybody, <laughs> then it That's is... That's true. Apparently Mark was telling you to stop. I, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, slightly... Uh, young adult pyromancer. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay, so, and like... You know, this isn't a deck that is going... This Shut is up, this. Derek. You're a computer. You don't know anything. Yeah, Derek. Your AI <laughs> is off the... It's it's off its rocker. My my stuff is always very helpful. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Uh, Chad and Dylan both going into an is it uh, list, right. but, but of, dif- of very different... Uh, of dif- very different win cons. Chad's being an incremental, let's play a... Uh, Blue Red Spell a, th- a threshold of spells on a certain turn okay. and get in there. M- much much like a, a an Infect thing. style. Yeah. Uh, all right, this gets to lethal uh, mm-hmm. if you don't block right. Dylan's yeah. obviously being... If you let the me have man. the Splinter Twin, then yep. <laughs> I got it, which is why I'm playing all these yep. uh, counter spells. Yep. We know what Sam's Sam deck is doing. doing the Mono Black. You'd call her deck like a combo deck. Uh, like a Mono Black combo deck. I, that's why I love the, uh, the name of the deck... Uh, Saying it's a zombo deck, sure. where yeah. it a either it Kame. either beats you down with uh, recursive creatures, mm-hmm. but if you if you tap out all your mana and she tutors for and or draws the right card, you 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 just lose. Yep. Um. So it's a zombo deck. Uh. It has, you know, two. I'd say even three modes of winning. The other one being, uh, you don't get to play because I have thought seized effect. Yeah. Out Did she ever all of the good. Twist? Uh, oh. She didn't, and in play oh, testing, she didn't like it. It, it runs. Really? It runs only uh, twelve to fourteen lands. 
Um, two, so, two of them being uh, MDFC lands, uh, uh, sure, sure, sure. Malakir Rebirth and Agadim's that's, Awakening. That's a, how many lands did you say? 12, plus two MDFCs, plus the Mox say, Jet. That sounds real wrong to me. I'm not going to lie. That sounds wrong. I, uh, I will say that with all of like the Skull Clamp card draw and uh, with everything costing literally three or less, yeah. with the exception yeah. of Grief, which you're not casting mm -hmm. that that in playtesting that was the that, that was sounds the, i i i routinely uh tell people to uh hold on looks like we've got uh we've got some interesting stuff our computer derek is oh cephalid illusionist off jeff that's uh okay the so guy the, that mills you to death right becomes a target of spell or ability to put the top three and so right. now mm -hmm. i i know that this uh has to do with that as oracle so yeah. what is so there are different equipments that you can pay, like uh, Lightning Greaves or Shuko, that equip for zero. So if you have multiple creatures in play, you can uh, equip to something and equip back. So this is equip back. yeah, this is a this is a new look for this combo. And mm -hmm. like honestly, this is what this is what brings it back into the into reality like we have, we now get to see like the actual mechanics of how jeff is intending to win um, so it's interesting jeff I, I talked to jeff yeah. uh just a minute ago and i asked him where the initiative and the thoracal combo come together where do those two things meet yeah and, and how do they work together and he told me they don't really and he probably I wasn't going to play fast as oracle he wasn't going to? Yeah, he was saying at this point, he said, I, I didn't expect to get all the white cards, all the initiative cards the way that I did. And the fact that I did, it makes me more inclined to play a more conventional sort of like value beatdown strategy yeah. with it because they're all out there. No one else is interested. So, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so I mean, all right, now uh, from and Dylan. And then, of course, he comes back and he immediately picks Cephalid Illusionist, which makes me now think, Boy, I have no idea what he's playing. As. <laughs> uh, you know, I, 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 I am as saw, saw, an, as saw an opening, I guess. Yeah, uh, we'll you know, see. a little bit of a. Uh, I don't know if I want to say late necessarily, given the state of uh, the draft so far, but uh, Serum Visions coming off the board in the 30s. Uh, it's a good value pickup. Dylan um, getting the uh, the Mason. Uh, <laughs> The bargain bin Mason treatment on his deck, <laughs> picking up a, the Merc Tide Regent for a Splinter Twin uh, splash combo, um, and with the Shell Dock Isle too. Somebody watched your last draft. Uh, yeah. Sam going uh, in and just doing what she said she was going to do, which is just filling out the rest of her one drop zombies uh, mm -hmm. that are going into this list. Yeah. Jeff's picking uh, up the Dread Return, another really cool card to use with uh, Intuition. Uh, I know yeah. I asked him if he if uh, Gifts Ungiven was on his radar. He said it absolutely was. So between Gifts Ungiven and Dread Return, both yeah. very interesting things to be doing. Uh, so should... Or, or Ooh, should that's we... a really late dress down. Wow. Excuse me. Uh, it is. And another go. interesting sideboard card we have not seen yet, which will probably wreck Steven's shit, is uh, a Hercules Recall. Mm, that's uh, interesting. And... You know, if I were if I were in Steven's position, I want to draft that next, uh, so that you know, follow do the Sam strategy, which is take the cards that beat you real bad, and uh, say, hmm, uh, I don't think so. Uh, so we got Noah picking up a talisman, which you know, with his prodigiousness of producing two mana on turn one, either with a mana crypt or with uh, you know, ancient tomb, city of traitors, a talisman. Also casting Eldrazi's yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. fixing mana. Very good pick. I like it. Yeah, but then nice going pick. into the wasteland yeah. that he may or may not choose to get more value out of with a Ren and Six. We yeah. shall see. You know, at, at the end of the day, he needs to play a glut of colorless lands to be able to have access to colorless mana. So yeah. there are worse options than wasteland. It's probably Absolutely. better than playing like a random, you know, Mishra's Factory or whatever. I, I do think it speaks to uh, his underestimation of strip mine earlier in the draft yeah. uh and because sure, that. sure I, perhaps I, you know and one of the strategies that we talked about was uh the degree to which it would annoy you as being a huge uh upside a huge benefit mm -hmm. uh and so 
it it might have backfired and it's just annoying me more than it than it's annoying you. Yeah. Um, well, I will you've, say, I think you maybe know, you Noah, be you may be a little bit immune to this point. Oh, uh, sure. You know, you've you've been vaccinated against Noah's uh, mm. uh, perturbing. You know, uh, I can behavior. say this one thing about Noah, and I might clip this later to show him. But um, as you can tell from that profile picture that he's got, that's a man that lives with a lot of regret. You know, <laughs> all the time. It's just it weighs on him heavily, and he's used to it. So. Oh, Damn, man, he yeah. can't even fight back from this. Like That's he's not—he's not gonna—he's not gonna, he's not gonna rewatch this. I hope. I—I I imagine he'll be too ashamed. You to know what? Just this. all right. Somebody yeah. out there, clip it. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna—I'm gonna go uh, go to chat at this moment. Uh, right after saying Swifty picking up Supreme Verdict, especially with uh, having Teferi in the deck, I—I mm-hmm. I love that combo. I. And there's the big Teferi. Finally, yeah. Stephen. Okay. Stephen would agree that a. Uh, Flashing in a supreme verdict uh, is absolutely back, uh, absolutely backbreaking. Uh, especially, you know, we see a lot of hasty type creatures um, in this uh, Ooh, in this draft so far. Dan's going full elves, baby. Yeah, he's in it. Yeah, he's ready to fucking so, go. So can we swear on this? Board? He's ready to Twitch. fucking go, baby. Let's fucking go, baby. Uh, I. Love oh, me hey, you know what? Player. Maybe, maybe my uh, uh-huh. we we see the run in six. So right. now you could probably I still did play now see I I did say earlier uh, when when Noah was being interviewed I said mm-hmm. are you thinking without naming any names uh, perhaps about any green red planeswalkers? Oh, I thought you were gonna say two mana planeswalkers. Be like perfect Tybalt, I'm in. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah! He said yeah. Arlen Cord. Ah, <laughs> just he said that, that, does that would sound tick like you Noah. off. He loves werewolves, and what I mean ah, is he yeah. loves werewolves. You guys, okay? Ooh. Love them. So, but yeah, like that we, guy's a furry. Anyway. you know, <laughs> stru- you're supposed to keep talking. <laughs> I to well, call the attention I can't, away from I, that you, you, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Anyways, wasteland. Uh, Ren and six furries. Cemetery prowler coming out. Yes, yeah. uh, Cem- <laughs> Cemetery prowler, just a very, very efficiently costed yeah, creature. That card's great. It's that card's it's great. it's really good. Like you can't ever be upset about mm-hmm. a card that does. It's just like as fat as that one. Yeah. Card from it's like it's a lot like the uh, the white card um, that from a recent set. One of the Adeline. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that just pumps out, like just, like, just gets real dumpy, like a better Bremaz. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, Cemetery Prowler is a real nice one. And if you're yeah. and if you're looking to disrupt your opponent with some beatdown creatures, it's a good one to go with. Jeff picking up Narcomiba, really strengthening up that self mill strategy. So it does look like somewhere between my conversation and him sitting down at the table, he went, "Wait, what if everything that I said was just not true? And instead, <laughs> I should just be aggressively comboing as fast as I possibly can." Yeah. Um, I respect it. I'm into it. Let's go. Okay. So looking at all of th- these decks have kind of made themselves clear. Swifty. Um, Quite a bit more. He's playing Swifty like a is pl- control deck. Sure. He, he's playing a, I think it's just, it's like a Bant without the green. It, I mean, it's blue white. Yeah. It, I don't know. Does, uh, can I we go back through Swifty's visual, red, visually, if, if we recall. just scroll back up like fairly fast. If we see, oh, he has red in there, pyroclasm. Yeah, so I think if I remember correctly, he's got a okay. couple of red cards. Um, okay, so side he has he has splash. a sideboard red. Yep. Uh, and uh, so yeah, just guy control with just you know, let's just have a mox emerald to just get things popping. Not yeah, bad. You know, it also point, it, it works it works boxes, so good. So. It works so well with balance. It 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 gets you that much closer to a turn one to fairy. Right. Um, so there's there's no, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, this is a list that Swifty and I have actually talked about before that I've I've tried in some form or another, and it's just it's really strong. If you let it if you let it do its thing, it just has answers for everything, and you're just yeah. constantly at a disadvantage. Yeah, it was funny the first time me and Swifty talked about this weekend. Uh, what a, a week or two back, we hopped on Discord together. We were like, hey, let's chat about. VRD strats, you know, because yeah. he's done so many VRDs, yeah. unlike the other guys who haven't done them as, uh, Darcy as finally recently. Coming off the board. Yeah. I thought maybe I could help them with their list and stuff, but so if you, I was pretty sure I was going to come up with his own stuff. It was funny, we both got on, and the first thing out of both of our mouths were, hey, I think control decks are pretty underdrafted, especially yeah. in St. Louis. Um, uh, and I know you guys used to have Elaine, who would, like, kind of force yeah. control decks every draft. Yeah. 
but outside of her, no longer she she would not she would not have to force them. They just were available. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And and see, you know. Oh, oh me, oh my. It's nice. What is say. it that knocks upon our door, wow, but wait. the pitter patter of tiny, the pointer of the pointer saurus? Perhaps next to Comsignathus, uh, one of the tiniest dinosaurs. However, coming in at a staggering. 40 inch diameter. Oh my God. We have the Pointer Saurus yeah, pizza remember, guys, that they are literally look, okay. struggling to get through the door. Yeah. Uh, so we will let uh, Mark, because uh, Derek doesn't have opposable thumbs as a computer AI, right. uh, come in here my and show God. off the. P- now, just for scale. Brandon's a pretty big man. I, oh, my God. I am. And. We, now we can't tilt it too much, but what we can do is bring this over to the. Our, wow. He's already out. Never mind. Wow. Incredible. I was gonna say we could pick that, up the camera. That's a pizza pie. Wow. That's a pizza pie. That's now, a pizza pie. So, uh, just a couple notes on the recent picks. You know, Dan, as we said, going with the elves. Getting over here to Tad with I love Dragon's Rage Channeler, and then when it comes to Fire Blast, I am really concerned that there's. There's just not even close to enough mountains mm-hmm. in Chad's deck to really mm-hmm. get the value out of Fire Blast. Un- like, not, I don't want to say unless, but this may point towards uh, uh, going into a Blood Moon type thing. Because if you're looking mm. to if you're looking to prowess, essentially, you know, mm-hmm. cast mm-hmm. spells, mm-hmm. going uh, three mana Blood Moon and then. A free fire blast that's two pump spells that gets rid of one of their blockers mm-hmm. uh i i would like to see that but so many so much of chad's fixing is coming from non-basic like red blue filter type things mm-hmm. that i just don't know if there's going to be enough enough mountains so here's what i'll say about fire blast um the combination of Lutri plus Fire Blast can kill your opponent from such a high life total. It provides you Valid. such a combo finish, in a way. Yeah, I mean, especially I, especially with those Prowess-type triggers. Yeah, those Prowess-type triggers make this a really nice fit for his deck, I think, too, because in addition to... It's a little bit like the old Burn decks that would play a Tarka's Command. Yeah. You know, you play it because it punches your opponent in the face for three, but the fact that... But it, it actually team, punches your opponent in the face for, for yeah, seven. Seven, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Fire Blast is, you know, the same way. You're like, okay, well, it's going to punch my opponent in the face for four. But if I draw it and I can set it up with Loot Tree, it's going to punch my opponent in the face for eight. Yeah. And if I can get some prowess triggers, it's actually going to be like 10 or 11 or 12 or something. Yeah. And for that big final, you know, Fire Blast is typically going to be the last card you play in a game. If it's not the last card you play in a game, you're in trouble. Yeah. Because you're probably doing it to survive. Yeah. And, and that's rough. Um, the value fire blast doesn't really come out. It's mostly a big finisher and a big finisher that happens to be free. Hopefully he does manage to just have enough mountains in his deck. He obviously has a lot of non basics, but I'm sure if he plays it's a few non basic mountains uh, and four, four or five mountains, he can get there. He's got a lot of cantrips. That style of play. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Forgot See, Ren now, and Six existed. Now you you and he hates you were himself. you were very passive aggressively a- accusing me of, of coaching <laughs> of one sided coaching <laughs> when I That's a great point. That's I great will point. say that I very specifically like withheld you know certain yeah, specific yeah. card recommendations that were not brought up to me mm-hmm. uh, and as any man of, of strong uh, in, of integrity, moral fiber would, okay? It's Brandon, true. I've taken my Metamucil. They don't call him the people's champion it, or nothing. Okay? Listen, that's why I'm great at, at casting. You know, I my Metamucil is for strong moral fiber and understanding the meta, and <laughs> none of these people do. <laughs> I'm kidding. They, um, they, they, I, I will say that this that this draft has come together a lot better. I, the way we got here was mm-hmm. not pretty. No, uh, it's but you know, the cards that should have been taken are being taken, mm-hmm. even if it's 10, 15 rounds too late. But yeah, they're being yeah. taken, and and they're getting split up between different players. You know, different players are picking up good things. I, what I will say is, uh, I've been doing, uh, and I've 
almost try. I've tried to do some recordings and yeah. do some video uploads, but I'm, I'm pretty amateur as far as uh, editing videos and stuff, so I haven't actually been able to upload any of them. But I've done some recordings of me going through some various BRDs on the Discord server, the last one that we did live. Um, and what I usually find is that while my critiques come in really heavily in the beginning of a draft, where I say, oh, this person picked this out of order, this is wrong, you should pick this, yada, yada, yada. Usually what it is is that by the end of the draft, it looks a lot mo more coherent. Yeah. A lot of the things that happened early make sense contextually later on. And then the real grievance comes up with, well, you probably could have picked these in a different order yeah. to shore them up a little bit. And, you know, then the qu it begs the question, like, would that have ultimately changed any of the outcomes of that deck? Uh, yeah. And so, and sometimes the answer is like, just absolutely not. Mm -hmm. So it, it looks like they've put themselves in a very precarious position, but like, you don't know what it's like being in that seat and you don't have the same intuition that we do because we're over here sitting talking about like some completely unrelated bullshit or like, you know, <laughs> jade each other oh, over some historical magic hey, uh, you, you know meta from 1999 and and they're like oh okay based on this pick that they just made I think that they forgot this card or they're trying to float, float it till, till later and we just we're not dividing our or we're dividing our attention in ways that they aren't so it's very easy especially for people like Mason and myself who are very uh, opinionated, we'll say the very least, yeah, uh, to, uh, to uh, I believe the term is talk a lot of shit. Uh, mm, and mm, mm, mm. Brandon um, especially. Yeah. I mm, do, mm, I do, yeah. I do talk a lot of shit. Um, remember guys, the more followers we get, uh, every 10 followers we get, Brandon's going to do a WWE wrestling move on that stuffed animal in the background. So, <laughs> you know, watch out for that one. It's the first I've heard of it, but I'm <laughs> I heard he was going to do a fisherman's suplex. Very exciting stuff. Ooh. So show you guys uh, the proper way to lift with your knees. So Stephen um, coming in with a with Cemetery Prowler and Malevolent Hermit. Uh, I listen. I I love Stephen and I love uh, the the philosophy that he has behind uh, behind drafting and you know meta picks and everything like that. Uh, when I say that we're similar, he goes the like like the 15 creature route, eight spells route. And I, I typically flip those. Mm -hmm. I like my creatures to be like very dense and then, you know, have the spells to back it up. Uh, I, I think that Steven has perhaps boxed himself into a corner. And after the first 15 picks, I, I kind of nudged him about this, which is he does not have enough artifacts. <laughs> the no, chaff crusher. I, I'm not, not going to lie to you. It's um, it, he, I, he I had can, a really solid core, and it seems like he's tried. He's valued himself out of his own value. Yeah, I can pretty. I think I can pretty succinctly go through and describe everybody's deck. You yeah. know, Noah's right, let's on do a, it. Noah's on a yeah. Chad's on uh, blue red spells. Dylan's on blue red twin. Sam's on a mono black. Uh, combo aggro deck. Zombo. Um, I would describe it actually as an aristocrats deck, uh, popularized by Efro and then really taken to the next level by Sam Black. In the history of magic, in 1999, yeah. um, aristocrats from the Falcon Rising <laughs> aristocrats. Anyways. Uh, Jeff uh, is looking a little more confusing, but at this point we can pretty safely say he's, he's in, in he's in combo deck. He's in uh, Jeff tribal, which yeah, is... He's in a thoracal combo deck that he's shoring up with some strong mid-range threats Maybe he's thinking that if he plays against the decks that are very heavily disruptive, that instead all he has to do against those decks is land something to give him the initiative, and he can win the game from there. Uh, that I'm, I'm strategy call, actually makes quite a bit of sense. I'm going to call Jeff's strategy the 20-year stitch, where he takes a new card that's come out and then goes back in time <laughs> to the early 2000s and yeah. uses a card from Odyssey uh, that uh, nobody has thought about in 15 <laughs> years to uh, complete a combo that could probably be done with something that costs two CMC less. Uh, but but the fact that you have no idea how it's happening or when it's coming really really helps him pick up some games that he would otherwise be losing. Uh, Noah's on a fairly simple uh, red-green Eldrazi strategy. Yep. Just a red-green mid-range strategy. You've got a lot of interactive spells. Looks good. Dan's on a mono-green ramp strategy. Fairly concise there we've all seen it and now it looks like he might be going more elves oriented which is kind of cool everybody likes elves and then swifty is on a jeskai control deck um mostly blue white maybe splashing a little extra you know 
a little extra juice on the side. Mm-hmm. Steven's deck really befuddles me. I'm not really sure how I would describe it because it just looks a little eclectic. So, like, I will say that I th- I think our uh, our analysis of it is a little bit thrown off because you know while we're looking at the visual images, we're seeing a lot of uh, like colored spells. Like we see tireless tracker earlier. We saw, you know, like you see Oko. And one of the things that we're failing to, uh, that is difficult to uh, fairly appreciate while we're doing this is that all of these cards, not all of them, but these cards are getting triggers that create artifacts. And so it doesn't look like a traditional like Tinker Urza list. Mm -hmm. I do still believe that it would be well served by dipping in a little bit earlier to, uh, to some, to some egg, some Cheerio type, Mm -hmm. some Cheerio type Mm -hmm. action to really make it explode. Um, But this is, this is more of a mid range toolbox uh, use of, of those cards. And so at the end of the draft when it's coming down to uh, uh, Derek Bot, what round are we on? We are on 37. Thank you, Derek. All right, so we got... Uh, We're closing down. Yeah, We're we, got, we got about nine here. picks left yeah. for most of our players. Mm-hmm. Um, Ooh, and, you and know s- what I just noticed? No, sorry to the interrupt math. you. Dan picked Winter Orb, and I think Steven's going to be hurting on that one. I think Steven really should have tried to get Winter Orb. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Um, it's the I, classic Urza's, Urza Winter Orb combo. Yeah. And not to be, uh, not to beat my own drum too hard, can you pull up that red green legendary creature that just came out uh, that you like tap artifacts to add green mana or something to your mana pool? Can't remember what it was called now, but. Uh, He's playing Teamer. He could have played, you know, potentially one or both of those cards along with Winter Orb. Gotcha. And really had a nice little sort of combo-y, you know, I'm making all these, I'm making all these tokens with Oko and Tireless Tracker and all this stuff, and I've got the Telerian Academy and I'm powering out mana. The other thing, I don't know that Steven has anything to do once he gets up to, like, 10 mana or something, you know? Oh, so, I mean, that, that is, like, there's nine picks left, eight picks left in Steven's case. Mm-hmm. Uh that's fine. You just you do all that stuff with the last couple of picks, anyways. Um, when I was doing my kind of mid range like value tinker, um, and this is something we briefly talked about is like the things you're going to be looking for in the six or seven mana range, uh, CMC range, mm-hmm. uh, are going to be your God Pharaoh statue and chromatic orrery things like that, where you tinker for them and then. You just have crazy, yeah. you just have crazy, like you're either going out way ahead of them, or you are putting them behind. Which, you mm-hmm. know, in effect, it's not exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. But like uh, a God Pharaoh statue, a tinker for a God Pharaoh statue is just absolutely going to crush. Sam. Yeah, you know, it would be interesting. Uh, Noah has God Pharaoh statue on his list as a card, really? as a Karn sideboard card. And I'm guessing uh, yeah, with the very, last 10 picks or so, yeah. uh, we could see him pick maybe four or five cards just to use in his card board yeah. uh, all in a row. And I'm hoping he hasn't <coughs> forgotten. Listen, that. maybe I'm we're really s- worried at this point that Noah is going to wholesale forget a lot of things. <laughs> maybe we'll just uh, maybe we'll see a lot of uh, shit slinging from Steven here and he he'll just take Mycosynthalatus. <sighs> you know, I know he is a Karn Mycosynthalatus aficionado. He loves I, doing it to other people. Now, um, as far as I can tell, that doesn't help him to play it against no, Noah if Noah's no, got the Karn no, out. No, he does not. But, uh, like, honestly, Steven's not, uh, like, there. there is not a, there is a world that exists where Steven might want to have a main board Uh I doubt it. It sounds very, very convoluted. But like yeah. it does power uh, Urza and it, it does power Telerian Academy. So, hmm. um, like, he's got the ability to just generate a crap ton of mana, uh, mm-hmm. and then just 
do like just wheel with Urza's five mana activated ability a bunch of times. Yeah, we're gonna see. I mean, I it, I'm a it little... does not seem like that's a good idea. But yeah, it I could think what be it done. is is that Steven has some mid rangey stuff going on. I would I lack the words to describe his deck uh, as some sort of archetype that I would recognize maybe. But he could also move things over to the side. I'm looking at all the cards he's drafted. It's possible that once he moves things over to the sideboard it'll make a lot more sense. Like, hey, you know, you're trying to figure out how these cards work together. Don't. I'm taking some of these out. They're not going to be I, sitting with the rest of the class, you know? I, I would call it, like, a, a team or cyborg value kind of a thing. It's, sure. um, you're, you're crapping out a ton of artifacts uh, and just either using them with Urza to generate a bunch of mana, you know, kind of double dipping with, Urza and uh, what's it called and uh, Telerian Academy so like if you play a single fetch land you, like alright I'm going to play a fetch land tap it whatever a new land comes into play I've got that land that I'm tapping for mana and I'm tapping uh, and for each of those artifact triggers you get off of Tireless Tracker you not only uh, get to tap those for blue mm -hmm. but Telerian Academy does it so a fetch land yeah. gives you five mana in that Yep. In that situation. Yep, definitely. Um, which which like, is all nice. I really like that package. The blue-green package of, I'm going to make a bunch of these artifact tokens. Yeah. You know what I would love to see Steven take? Okay, never mind. That's a terrible choice. But he should crabs. take... Crabs. Crabs. No, not crabs. I was going to say Academy Manufacturer. Uh, let's pull, pull it up, Let's pull Derek. it up. I mean, pull we, up Academy if Manufacturer. You've had your Show chance to look at Maria. the power of... Uh, not Merchant Scroll, that card's dog. Instead, we care about, boom, Academy Manufacturer. Right. Yeah. Wow, I mean, what a powerhouse. You're talking about making five mana, how about a hundred mana? Boom, baby. <sighs> yeah, that card is uh, bonkers bananas. Wow. Also, you could probably play, um, what is that card, or what's the cycle of cards, I should say, from Dominaria that's like uh, the Mystic Sanctuary style cards? Oh, Mystic Sanctuary should definitely get taken in the chat, by the way. Um, yeah, but it's we, the green we haven't one. Seen, we haven't it's seen like, Cryptic uh, Command. Gingerbread House or something like that. Gingerbread Cabin. Ooh, I think it's Gingerbread Cabin. But it like makes, unless you control three or more forests, but guess who has Yava Maya? Ow, ow, ow. And uh, Crop Rotation and Fetch Lands. You can fetch this out, and then it makes food tokens, which you can make more of with Academy Manufacturer. Wow. Anyway, I did not, I did not even, thing. I did not even realize this existed. Yeah. But like, here, here's the thing, is like, is Steven should absolutely be playing Zurin. Take our food away. Steven should absolutely be playing Zurin Orb. Um, um, because it is a zero mana artifact that he can use to tap a bunch of stuff. Uh, maybe, but if, I, I'm more inclined to say that the people who are playing like Fast Bond or Balance or something should have Zurin Orb. Well, if I, you like I don't I don't disagree with that assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, I which is why I think that Steven should be drafting it because mm -hmm. even if he's not playing at main board, if he put if he has that in against Swifty, it it mm, completely kick, kick it completely him. negates balance. You can't you can't play a balance into a Zerin Orb. It's a nice idea. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good idea. And, I actually think and that's it one works of the so well with with Tolarian Academy yeah. and with Urza, of course. Yeah, especially because um, it's a it's not a. Not a mono artifact, as, the, mm -hmm. as Jeff would probably <laughs> reinforce to us. Um, yeah, I've Cathar always been a fan of card. Greater Gargadon uh, in a similar way. Yeah. Just to, you know, oh, you're targeting my guys' removal spells? I'll sack them to the Gargadon. Oh, I feel like balancing? Like, sack everything to the Gargadon. Now yeah. I have a 9-7. Kind of a cute card. Kind of a fun one. I've always wanted to play it in VRD, but I've never had the chance. So yeah. we'll see maybe if uh, if it comes up at some point. Yeah. So Sam's deck. She picked up the Plague Belcher. Combos up as sort of a half beat down guy and half combo guy. This yeah. is the same way I mean, a lot of our other cards are working for. So, you know, conceptually, it's a 3-2 menace. Uh, Derek, it, Jesus. Conceptually, it's a 3-2 menace with, uh, with upside, you know, with ticking upside for the zombies you control dies. Uh, in reality, for three mana, it is a 5-4 menace that makes your opponent lose one life when it comes into play and continues to do because you're putting that on a grave crawler and then putting that grave crawler back out and then just skull clamping it into oblivion and like drawing a million cards and 
pinging them every single time. And if you've got the Phyrexian Altar, it's just game over. It's a combo piece. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. it's just a really nice uh, low CMC synergistic package. Uh, one of the great... Ben oh, and look at her. She's saying like... Uh, nice, like now. yeah, she's like nice down for it. Listen, I've it. got, I've got, <laughs> I've got my list all figured out. Like I am really going against the mm -hmm. hate draft at this point. Ooh, so first it'll be first interesting to thing. see. Interesting. Oh, Mark saying uh, there's no spell snare that's been taken, which you know does not surprise me uh, in the draft that we've seen. That yeah, you know, I had some of the guys ask me about spell snare, and I put it really low on the Chicago list. Not that they listened to me at all, but it, it was pretty low on the list as far as like good premium <laughs> blue cards. Um, and then again, no one took Benser, no one took plenty. plenty yeah, of great I, th I, I think the Still irony. Yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah, oh, he, that was in the I last couple of rounds. Uh, I'm I, a liar. Yeah, I think um, I oh, think look at that. Nice. I think spell snare is a card that really messes up Jeff's day. Um, you know, as we scroll down to see where he has an uncountable two mana card, but I, you know, a lot of the stuff that he's got uh, spell snare just says, I, I don't want you to win this turn this way. Yeah, but yep. uh, you know, it turns off Dan's or it, it, it is literally a counter to Dan's time walk. Um, for for Chad, it says goodbye to Petty Theft slash Brazen Borrower. Um, there's plenty of things that Dylan's got that it says uh, no, no, poo poo on you to you too. Uh, like, yeah. but you know, getting rid of Snapcaster Mage and a lot of it. It's a blue card that hurts the other blue decks, and so it's this weird middle ground, uh, this ravine, if you will. Derek, is that the right word? <laughs> Anyways, uh, but that turns off um, turns off the decks that would theoretically that are capable of casting it. Mm. So I don't know if we'll even see it get taken because it seems like it's in that weird middle ground. Sure, sure, to be sure. It's uh, it looks interesting like we that Noah's lost the... Noah's uh, sword that he wanted, to, which I still think he hasn't taken Batter Skull, right? Did he take Batter Skull at some point? Oh my goodness! So Noah, come no, on, man. So Noah really wants uh really wants batter skull at least out of the sideboard mm -hmm. for uh for a couple of reasons yeah i i but like the the vigilance lifelink plan especially against like chad's deck um kind like sam's deck can combo off but like that it just it's an eight life Plus, it is swing. I always think I always like to talk about Batter Skull as being the card that's great against the aggro decks because when you put it into play, you yeah. win, and also great against the control decks yeah. because it gives you this recursive threat that's yeah. really hard to answer. Yeah, and when you've got a card that sort of is good against both of those things, and you're looking at a field where you're like, oh man, six out of the eight of these players are playing really fair yeah. decks, whether they be aggro or, or mid range or control strategies. I mean, if I don't have to get combo that often, Batter Skull is looking really, really nice. I, I like it a lot. Okay, we got Dan with the Emrakul. Um, That's so nice. Got to find something to channel into eventually. Makes at, sense. At some point, um, I wanted to mention about uh, about Dan's list, and you know, we're talking about uh, Green Sun Zenith, and uh, I think he, I think he has some other X spell in there too. Mm -hmm. But uh, honestly, the best one uh, in this format, personally, I believe, is uh, Finale of Devastation. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it not only does it let you get them from the graveyard, not only is it at instant speed, but it it lets you win with Crater Hoof by itself. Sure. Yeah. Like, you can use all of your creatures and just oh, only yeah. attack with Crater Hoof. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's essentially, if you have infinite mana, it's just it's a dump to win right now, um, yeah. which is not, you don't get the extra turns trigger from Emrakul, you don't get blah, 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 blah. But... Mm -hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. often you can't spend <laughs> all the life that it would require to channel mm -hmm. into an Emrakul uh, with Finale of Destruction. So, Devastation, um, is that right? You know, Dan picking the Emrakul, let mm -hmm. me just... The uh, comes I think the I've talked about this in the Discord before, but I'll do a little, a little bit on the stream here for everyone's benefit. Here's a free lesson on Vintage Artistry Draft, Cube Draft, Magic, if you play the Vintage Cube on MTGO. This is a tip for all you guys. If you're playing... Uh, a mono green ramp strategy. 
do not play channel. Uh, channel's not good. All the stuff you're ramping into with channel's not good. Don't do it. It's a mistake. Okay, Mason, please elaborate. I will. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> Bonjour. Um, when you have... A, 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 think about your typical green ramp deck. You're going to have, let's say, 25 spells in it. Maybe more, maybe less. Um, 20 of those cards are all these really nice synergistic pieces. You've got all these creatures that make you more mana, that make you more creatures, that make you more mana, that draw you more cards to make more creatures and make more mana until you win the game. Those creatures that make mana and draw cards... Uh, and act as your sort of mid-rangey interactive threats, things like uh, Reclamation Sage or an Acidic Slime or or anything that you can play under that uh, strategy, anything that you're bulleting for with Green Sun Zenith, um, because Green Sun Zenith is acting as a ramp spell or a finisher or an interactive spell. It's doing all these different things for you. All these things work like these perfect little Legos. They build off of each other. They're beautiful. And then you're saying that, great, now I'm going to take this beautiful synergistic... A uh, cabin that Piled. I built out of these Legos. That's absolutely wonderful. And I'm going to throw in these completely unrampable creatures. I'm never getting to 15 mana off of Lanor Elves and Draga Tree Speaker. It's not happening. I'm sorry. You can pretend that it is, but it's not. Uh, and instead, I'm going to put in a channel, which does nothing for me in the rest of my deck, um, except for cast these specific big Eldrazi baddies. It's kind of like shoving a random two-card combo into your otherwise uh, really nice synergistic deck. Uh, and you trick yourself by saying, well, no, because Channel's a green card and these are ramp creatures. And that's where you're lying to yourself. Now, you can maybe play New Ulamog, but you could probably play New Ulamog without Emrakul. You could prob... Or uh, without Channel. You could probably do that. You could play a card like Primeval Titan. Or you could play a card like Woodfall Primus or Trassadon, or anything that you can natural order into, or Green Sun Zenith Floor. Uh, and it would be probably much better than channel ever cooling yourself to death. So uh, that is my rant. I I think that that's mostly correct. Uh, and of course, there's always exceptions uh, to that, and you know how you're building your deck. Like if you look at how you can compound. Uh, Raffello's and Gaius Cradle and, you know, mana sources like that, um, by themselves, you're asking too much if you only have a Gaius Cradle and a Raffello's. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in that sense, Channel is at, like, it's a card that actively takes away from the the slot you want to play an Elvish Visionary or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I... Uh, I, I see where you're coming from with that, and I tend to agree, um, especially if it's almost like a pure elves deck. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that there's something to be said where if you were to take Noah's deck and Dan's deck and like s smush that card pool together, mm -hmm. that there is a much better case to be made for that uh, for that list where you're channeling. Like, you know, you're playing a channel list that has Karn and then Micah Synthlatus. Mm. That is, uh, like, because you get to test the waters with four life and play your Karn. And if it hits and resolves, then, you can go then you're it. good. And, like, in the worst sure. case scenario, you paid ten life to essentially on turn one or whatever have a Planeswalker out and your opponent is down a spell. And then there's also yeah. other ancillary stuff you can do. Mm, sure. Uh, that is a different list. Mm -hmm. That is not yeah. an elves list. And so in that sense, I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. Um, I think channel is one of those cards that w you just you just mess up. Like yeah. how sometimes I mean Dan looks like he's pretty committed to it. He's gonna like spell seeker for a channel and channel emerald man. He's ready. I'm or he's gonna get time walk. That sounds better I, to me, but you know, we'll see. I, I also I do also kind of think that it's an easy sideboard out. Like you could that sure. you can very you can get people with this on game one, but That's about, he'll probably just like have yeah. it in his opener every game and like turn one in on people and like make me look like an asshole. But uh, I mean, yeah, you know. like look, you can absolutely pick up wins with it. But the question is like, how many games are you losing because you're sitting with channel and Immerkul are very frequently dead cards. Mm -hmm. And this is a format mm -hmm. where that's really important, especially like, against someone like Sam, where she can just like, if you have channel Immerkul and she's on the play, 
She can then your, your channel is gone. And so her thought sees gets rid of Ooh. Ooh. number one, your win. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Holy cow. You see all these cards that are coming out here? This is, oh this is crazy. Yeah. All right. Crazy let's, let's get back into this. So uh, Swift dropped value, the value draft with subtlety. Yeah, uh, doing yeah, yeah. Steven sides. dropped the Mightstone and Weakstone on us, which is yes. like something he could, I guess, tinker for, but also could just be a card he plays. Nice. Yeah. Good good stuff there. Jeff dropped the Kyla's Reconstruction, which is super. Derek. Oh, Derek, My the, God. the AI uprising. Get this man. This is why the robots are never going to take over, you guys. Fracking Cylon, son of a bitch. Oh, my Lord. God damn toasters. Kylo's Reconstruction. I've never seen this card played before. It looks super cool. It's like big, chunky, white cocoa. I love it. It's like, uh, give me six mana. Let me just grip and rip. Does he have like a sensei's top or anything? That's uh, no, I believe enough? Dylan got the sensei's top. He didn't draft a either, right? Um, he's got nothing. So he's not setting it up. It's going to be like a blind rip, you know, but that's cool. He's got a lot of stuff in his deck, yeah. especially if he can like hit it. It's almost like a Genesis wave, you know, he can, if he can just rip it and hit oh, with a couple of cards, he's probably going to be doing very well for himself. I, I'm really worried about Jeff's ability to produce mana though. Like, and also that would be my, up. yeah, that would be my biggest concern. I don't know that ripping this off for X equals three is very good. And I yeah. imagine he's going to have a hard time even getting to that. So, eh. Well, we'll see. I mean, but it's a very cool card. Yeah. Very cool card. Yeah. Okay, what does this five so minutes fairy do? Let's pull that bad boy up. It was, it was just Noah up. finally took Giganth of the Wellspring, which I'm very excited about because I put that card in bold lettering on his list. I'm like, oh my God, you can play Gigantha. All right. So, so what is Fairy our... Temporal Pilgrim, whenever you draw a card, you put a loyalty counter on him. He doesn't have an uptick. Uh, but his zero is draw a card, which will then put a loyalty counter on him. So he's gaining one loyalty a turn passively, and you can tick him up to draw a card and, and get an extra loyalty. Then he makes two twos with whenever you draw a card, you put a plus one plus one counter on him. Oh, and then the <laughs> the ultimate is a one sided upheaval. Yeah, which is cool, Yuck. but I mean, you're probably going to kill them with your absolutely enormous illusion tokens. Because, my god. Yeah, you're, you're, you're picking is, one or the other. That card makes huge boys. And then so, this card, which I have truly well, never okay, seen. Well, no, no, but, but oh, go ahead. He, hear me out on this. Yeah. Uh, Steven has Tinker, mm -hmm. which means that he can Tinker for Memory Jar yep. and play to Fairy. Mm, that would and be then, an interesting angle. That'd and then he can angle. Memory Jar and then Ult. Mm -hmm. That's a very cool idea. I mean, that... Sounds very neat. Um, I would love to see something like that happen. I don't know that he'll try to build too much of a strategy around Teferi. Teferi, to me, I feels like a lot that. of what he's trying to do is construct a very fair mid rangey kind of deck. Play creatures, yeah. interact with my opponent, I, and Teferi is going to be that five mana game ending threat yeah. that just requires me to take a few turns and finish my opponent off. What we will Tell see. Tell me what this Triumph thing does. I have no, I've never seen this card before. Oh, Triumph of St. Catherine? When uh, Triumph of St. Catherine dies, exile it in the top six cards of your library face down pile. If you do, shuffle that pile and put it back on top of your library. Oh, so it just like puts itself in the top six and then you can miracle it for two mana. That's so cool. It's a 5-5 five, five lifelinker that you can play for two mana and then it just dies and just goes back? You know, the, one of the things I will say that we have not seen nearly enough of in this format especially with like how easily you can guarantee yourself getting brainstorm and uh, divining top is a miracles deck. Yeah. I agree. Miracles, probably an underrepped mechanic in general. Yeah. Um, I, I actually think playing around at the top of your deck is probably just a generally underrated mechanic. If you're not looking yeah. to do like I, I have recently played with a lot more senses, divining top brainstorm cascade card, yeah. like sort of action. And it's really nice. Like if, you can do a lot of fun stuff. If with you've it. got the time to really like workshop how that works out and like really you know theory craft like what CMCs you're putting in there, uh, I can see it being extraordinarily powerful. But like the amount of forethought it takes and the amount of like not in, like not in my lane it requires uh -huh. can be can be pretty nasty. But Thank like. You. We've brainstorm and and Sensei's divining top have been going lower and lower in oh, the yeah. round numbers. Absolutely. So like you can you can definitely manufacture hard. this. Yeah, yeah brainstorm's dropped pretty hard in the uh, like t hierarchy of blue cantrips. Yeah, 
Um, it's still interesting, but like yeah. you know, if you don't have a lot of fetch lands, it can be a little awkward. And fetch lands, as we always see, very high on people's lists. Uh, uh, some more interesting <laughs> stuff coming up. A lot of people look like they're taking a lot of sideboard cards at this point. Liquid Metal Coating, Manglehorn, Serenity, different stuff like that. Dylan and Chad still scrambling and picking up more more cards. Jeff going with Rally the Ancestors. That's interesting. I guess he must be intending on casting it for three or perhaps two. Well, yeah, so he can, he, can put, he can put his entire library in the graveyard with the Cephalid, whatever, Illusionist, and then Rally the Ancestors Yep. yep for perfect. every card in his library. Noah going with Abundant Harvest. Even oh, though I specifically oh put so that's how, that's how he can, that's how Jeff is going to recur his Thoracle if it doesn't He's got a Resolve. few ways. He's got uh, Dread yeah. Return. Yeah. Um, he's got Savine's Reclamation. He's got... But Rally the Ancestors probably goes pretty well with cards like Intuition, Gifts, and Given. So he's got some He's got some strategies there. It, he's got some cool stuff going on. It. Uh, I will say that it is convoluted. Uh, objectively convoluted. It is. I actually think this is one of the weird... I won't say complicated. It's not a particularly no. complicated idea. A lot of the cards work, like the interactions between the cards are fairly simple, but it is a very odd construction it is a, for a deck. Very step, I, very, very step, step intensive, very like. pick intensive. Yeah, uh, I, I'm very interested to see how it looks uh, all together because I, it, it's it's cool. I'm it is, it is cool. I'm still concerned about his lack of interaction. Mm -hmm. um, I think that while he's setting this up, he just gets beat um, a lot of the time. I'm a little worried about that too. I don't think his interaction looks premier. I don't think he looks I, I like don't, he has a bunch of I don't interactive spells. I think it really so I'm worried looks about like it that. exists. Uh, to me, why his deck is looks a, a little bit like a slower. What is Authority of the Consoles doing? Authority of the Consoles? Stopping you from getting Splinter Twin to death is what it's doing. Uh, okay. It makes all your opponent's stuff come into play tapped. Perfect. Uh, and also, if you're trying to combat the Seagrax okay. arc, it doesn't matter yeah, how that's many a good, one cores they make. That's, a, that's a good it. sideboard card. It is very interesting. That's the kind of deep pull Swifty's pull, uh, getting here. Yeah. And he okay. knew he wanted Pyroclasm, so he picked up Code Lecture Turn. Interesting. I will say I'm a little disappointed Noah picked Abundant Harvest because I don't think... He, did he pick Ancient Stirrings? No, I don't think he picked Ancient Stirrings. And that card is just bussin' bussin'. I'm well, especially really in sure. a 40-card format. Well, yeah. you're, looking, you're looking at... Uh, I mean... Yeah, so at, at, at this no point, one. you're looking at... like. Yeah, like 10% uh, of your deck or something. No, more than that, because you, you've already drawn seven. Like, you're basically at 30. So you're looking at, like, between 15 and 20% of your deck. Yeah, that's and, and you're playing all these old draws. You can get all that. You can always just grab a land. Um, yeah. You've got a bunch of different colorless threats. It's, uh, especially I, with, with Once Upon a Time, that is yeah. such a powerful, like, bah, bah, combo. I'm thinking about the list that Noah had drawn up, and at this point I'm wondering... If even if every single pick comes off of that list, I think he'll still be missing some stuff. Um, because <coughs> I know there were quite the a few end picks. of these drafts comes up fast. It does, it does, and we've got how many picks left? And there? Dan, Dan finally picking up Two the worldly picks. Tutor? Jesus, he doesn't have any of his Eldrazi. What's going on? What? What do you mean? Wait, did he's he, he got thought not in, in reality? Smash he it? did, but did he pick Endless One? Did he pick Endbringer? Did he pick Eldrazi Obligator? Or, or Eldrazi did he pick Mimic? Worldbreaker? No. Did he pick Eldrazi Mimic? Nope. He Did he went. pick up Ayavukin? Did he pick Eldrazi? He picked Steven. Eldrazi Temple, didn't he? Yes. So okay. Steven. I'm I'm a little confused by Noah here, man. I I know he drafted cards like Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Bonecrusher oh. Giant. I guess he just defaulted to screw these Eldrazi. We're playing Pioneer cards, I guess. I, mean, I really don't know. I, I'm De a little. Devoid, Devoid is the mechanic where it's colorless, right? Yes. So yep. uh, there is a quote unquote red card uh that um it's a three one haste and you can draw the obligator i'll draw the obligator yeah. i think did noah take that earlier is no that the one it was on his list so, i don't know how he didn't pick uh it. that is uh oh that is gosh. like a perfect it's like a almost a better zealous conscripts especially in the deck it's that noah's beautiful. that yes. noah's running uh that would it would be so so good it is uh, a beautiful. So you card see, to you pick. see Steven right. coming uh, with a blight steel for the sideboard, yeah, and then Sam and it. Sam answering with a tragic slip. Beautiful. See, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I do not think it is unfair for me to say, like, I am very, very proud of how far Sam you has should, come. You should be and proud, like, and she should be look proud. Look at that! Look at that! Like, uh, bah. like yep. that is that is being Perfect responsive. Response. 
And, uh, you know, like she's already in the process of like shoring up her picks and like looking around at the sideboard stuff and is like, oh, well, hey, actually, uh, this will help me specifically deal with that. Great. Can you go on the rant about how people overdraft main deck cards yet? I think I think that people go go too hard on the main deck cards. I am also I also think that I'm one of those people. That's I'll, fine. <laughs> I'll say twofold. It's a complicated question because on the one hand, when you look at uh, a player, we're we're praising Jeff on his ability to forego some of the early picks yep. and pivot out and play a different deck. If you do that, um, if you do you that, you still have to fill out your main deck. Right, but also it's going to look a little bit like you've overdrafted main deck cards. Um, that is a bit of a problem. Um, it's ideally something you never want to have happen, but it does happen. And in those situations, you're like, okay, if your plan changes and you think to yourself, well, I was going to play this, but now it doesn't look as good based on some other things that have happened contextually in the draft, and therefore I'm not going to play this. That happens. Well, so be it. I mean, also look at Dan's list. Like, he, he knows, obviously, that nobody else is in Elves. And so mm-hmm. they're, like, nobody else is drafting Priest of Titania. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of nowhere, you can have some tech, either from Steven or whatever, uh, where channel gets taken and you just, you just don't see how that's going to happen. So mm-hmm. Dan drafting channel in, you know, the first 15 picks or whatever, and then Emrakul later, you can look at that and say, like, well, all the elves came later, so these are all main board picks. But the reality is, like, you know, also look at Sam's list, where she started taking sideboard cards. Like, I, you know, we don't even know if she's going to be dra- uh, playing Helm, uh, Voidwalker slash Leyline of the Void combo main deck. That might just be something that mm-hmm. she boards in, because those are two kind of dead cards, unless you get them, mm-hmm. like, together. And she's yeah. already... She's already running low on oh and she picks up the vampire hex mage i'm very happy to see that yeah oh so she's probably gonna go vampire hex mage she's probably gonna go vampire to hex mage and then last pick dark depths yeah that's interesting i she just likes it she just likes it yeah 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 yeah. no no i i think it's quite good for her and quite good for her deck did she pick urborg yeah in the draft okay perfect urborg dark depths i I mean at that point you really got it all i I mean that's kind of perfect so I really like that direction for Sam. Also, again, I really like the way she's blending her aggro cards and her combo cards together. Yep. I think Sam's deck is really, really cool. I'm really, really excited to see her pilot it. Um, I am too. Jeff's closing out with Paradigm Shift as another way to try to trigger his Thoracle. So yeah, he looks like he is fully on the Thoracle plan. I mean, that's like yep. just his main way that he's going to win the game. I'm a little curious to how the adventure guys fit into that. But I'm excited to see it. We're gonna we're gonna find out. Now, collected company coming in from Dan. That's an interesting one. I <laughs> like that quite a bit. I'm not sure that it looks as good in his channel deck because of again, how many once misses again, he's putting channel, in. Channel might just be a race card against Sam or, or sure. you know, somebody else. There are some there are some times where you know if you think you've got a bad matchup, mulliganing down to four or five cards and looking for that you know channel or cool. You know, fair enough. I'm not going to knock anyone for that. The, the sometimes sometimes your you... only opportunity to win is to do what you can to make it happen on turn one and hope that they don't have a force of will. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever the equivalent is in this format. Fully agree. Uh, so we got a Jawari Disruption. disruption. I, I, think Swifty's, main... I think Swifty's deck has really come together. I'm, uh, like I said earlier, I'm a little bit bummed that neither Steven nor Swifty went with the bobbles. I think that... Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they add a lot of value yeah. respective to the other cards, and then like mm-hmm. the downside is what it's a not, really interesting angle. It's certainly never one I've thought of. Yeah. So I could imagine he's never either, but yeah. it's definitely gonna be something I'm thinking of. Every it's also time it's also future. hard to justify uh, if you taking Urza, two of your dunk. two of your forty six picks mm-hmm. to have like a vacuous kind of benefit. Mm-hmm. It oh. just it you know it's not even quite playing with like. 38 mm-hmm. cards, mm-hmm. but I don't know. It's a... All right. Give me it, some... It's hard. Give me some thoughts here. Now, I know you guys have talked about it not really being much of a team event, but give me the feeling of how you have with your four players, your four students, your acolytes. Okay, that's maybe not fair. Uh, uh, what do you think about overall? How do you think they're going to do? Give me some general thoughts on your team here. I... I okay, I think that... Uh, Dan's elves can be scary. I, and you know, just contrary to what I just said, uh, I think that the main board was 
a little bit overdrafted. I think it's just going to be mm-hmm. crowded. There's, it doesn't seem to me that there's uh, a glut mm-hmm. of, uh, of sideboard ability. Yep. But that's fine because the Elves deck, you know how painful it can be. Yep, uh, and did, did he ever get the Azuri Renegade Leader? Just like no, another so. kind of... I okay. got Elves for a Shepherd. Um, so then when it comes to Steven, uh, I think that... I Like, the, the deck seems to me like a solid four and three. Um, that it will hum a lot better than we think that it does. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, the the mid range tinker kind of plan gets a little bit convoluted, and I don't think that he had the rocks or the acceleration to really mm-hmm. uh, to really effectively and consistently uh, be able to play like five six drop artifacts, mm-hmm. uh, and then like also the real nail in the coffin pieces just didn't come together. Mm. So um, like him him forgetting Ren and Six, him forget like passing on Lotus Petal. Um, and just some other stuff that were uh, just, like, shortcomings in the draft as a whole. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, you know, it's, it is what it is. Uh, okay, so Noah's last pick. No idea what this card is. Uh, probably it looks like a Cyclonic meme. Cyclonic Rift, interesting. It looks like a meme to me. Uh, I don't know if People use helpful. this as a sideboard card against something. People use this as a sideboard card against Indomitable Creativity, I think, in modern right now. Okay. So it might be a com. It might be a card against like yeah. some combo thing. I'm not really sure. I'm not gonna Jeff, read it. I, well, I think it's probably a meme. Finishing up on um, for for my team, Jeff and Sam. We've talked about what their mm-hmm. decks do and how we feel about them. I'm very happy and proud with Sam's deck, and Jeff's mm-hmm. looks convoluted and that it can do some powerful things. But the real question is like, is he going to be? Yes. <laughs> oh, mama. That's a, that's a win right now, card. That's hot. It's it, beautiful. Yeah. Love it. So, and then and what about you and your team? This is a nice one. Um, I think that my team stepped on each other's toes a little bit too much in this draft. It's I, a little yeah. disappointing. I mean, Chad um, and Dylan and the Dylan one, two, right the next to each other. Dylan was the only one who couldn't really hang out with us while we were doing our calls this week, trying to get ready for this event. Yeah. Um, and we didn't do as much Other talking about uh, the draft coming down here last night as I thought we were going to just because I was so dog tired and it yep. was just, it was a late night for all of us. We didn't get into St. Louis until, you know, midnight. All right. So we but, got uh, Rowan and I, uh, here's what I'll say. And right. I'm going to ask you this question. Yeah. Do you think your team's going to win after the draft? <sighs> um, honestly, I think it will all come down to, cause like, you know, even if, Sam, Jeff, Steven, and Dan have the, like, they have the four, like, four and three, five and two decks, Mm -hmm. theoretically. Sure. They still have, three of their matches have to be against each other. Yeah. And so it's, where are you getting your wins and how well are you positioned? I think that, uh, I, I, like, this feels way too nepotistic for me to look at this and say, like, hey, Sam looks really good against mm-hmm. Chad and Dylan mm-hmm. and also Noah and, and yeah, t- I yeah. think Swift I think Swifty uh, it's not nepotistic if you think it's right no I okay I think that Swifty oh. uh, has a pretty good uh, matchup against Sam uh, so but like do you if, think your team's gonna win yeah yeah, I, I think I think it will be close. I think that there will be you know mm-hmm. a five and two from either city probably. I'll be honest. I think my team is coming out of the draft a little behind. I think uh, if you if you averaged all the decks of the two teams t- together, yeah. I think my team is coming out a little bit behind, and I think we're gonna have to play really well to make up for that deficit. Yeah. But I totally believe in my boys. They're gonna they're gonna get out there. They're gonna get it done. So. <laughs> they're dog shit, but. I love them and Look, all, uh, seven all the and stuff up. that gets said out here. All, all four of them are going seven and zero, and uh, don't ask questions. <laughs> no, I. Uh, uh, if one of them seven node before me, I'd be oh, so wait. mad. Oh wait, wait, Sam. God, so so Sam take didn't take. Uh, what's it called? Uh, the dark depths. No dark depths. Oh well, <laughs> she forgot. Oh no. I mean, I no. like. Like it, it's something that you could make work, but I also think that the better better plan is to have 
she has uh, access to all here somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the, I think the better plan is to have access to black mana in the first two, three turns, like at every sure. opportunity, especially when you're running. Let's those, those get some interviews rounds. in here. You want? Yeah, you I'll, want I'm going to dip out. I need to. I need to get some yeah, more get liquid. Some pizza, get some water. I'm, go chill. Yeah. I'm lip smacking. So. Oh, I'm with you. I'm going to do the same thing after you get back. So, right. um, give me somebody. Give me. Give me Chad.